Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting with the first game of the round two, Battle of Africa, WWP, Amigos. And this is Donut. And we need to see, we need to see Mr. Orlu, the civilizations um, and everything. I'm setting up everything. Do you, do, uh, are you in the game or not? Ma'am, I'll, I'll be honest with you. This map isn't looking very good. Why is not looking very good, this map? We are inside. I mean, inside. personally, grass nothing is not my cup of tea, but, you know, obviously, I don't want to tell you how to run your tournament. Yeah, it is, it's a little bit hard to wall on grass nothing, but, you know, I'm sure MBL and Tim could make it work. You cannot wall in this map. <laughs> you cannot wall in this map, but look at leaks. Already going with the village in, that's terrible because he's against the eagle, you know? It's against the eagle, and that's, oh boy. Yeah. Wait, oh, wait, remember, are you in an already. actual game? I am in the game, yes. I am in the game. We're in the game. I, the, the game I loaded literally was just a blank grass one map with, like, just the players randomly thrown around. Like, there were no resources, no nothing. Well, that's because you didn't... <laughs> I have uh, never had that bug before. Because you got the bug. I was surprised. I don't know. I mean, when you were talking, I was like, I don't know what you're talking. You know? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we have the Amigos. I don't know why this is... Also, this doesn't work. Amigos versus... WWP. I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the real yeah, game. I was very confused that what you were talking about because I was like, this map is amazing. I don't know what you were talking. So it's that you got a book. A book, yeah, amigos. Yeah, yeah. Valas Lithuanians and Fan Dragon with Burgundians. Burgundians as a yellow. And uh, as you can see, guys, hopefully we can fix the camera from Vivi later. But he's not working for now. Leaks is sending three delays forward. He's Persians. He's going to make a douche? Well, not oh, for no. now. Not now, for sure, but he's sending three more villages. And I don't know what Leaks <laughs> is trying to do here. Seriously. I mean, when, when this kind of battles happen, Orlu, we don't even have time to analyze civilization matchups. Nope. We are just going to be uh, experiencing some good old Leaks.exe right here. I mean, already, you have to be thinking something might be up from WWP. We know Vivi loves his Burgundians, but still, having Yo play flank Portuguese and then Vivi playing pocket... Uh, maybe something a bit weird is going to happen, but it does kind of make sense. You know, Lix goes to completely screw up Barrels. It gives uh, Vivi time to get going in the pocket, and then you just assume that Yo can 1v1 whoever his flank is. So I, I can kind of see it. Yeah, but I don't know if this is going to be an oath because Vala has an amazing civilization. He has the Mayans. He's using all the four villages, and I don't know. It's true that Persians start also with uh, with some advantage, but... I don't know. Look at green, Valas, and Barls. Sorry, because it's Barls, the flank. Valas is here with the scout. And Barls is usually amazing in these kind of battles. He's used to do all this thanks to the Black Forest experience. And right now, I don't know if he's going to lose another village. The scout is here, but with only one HP. And Lix is doing absolutely nothing right now, Mr. Orlu. Nope. Uh, I think it's just a perfect response from Barls. Four villagers here, so pretty much, you know, the, the same amount of vills as your opponent, plus one, so you're just always guaranteed to win those fights, making Not sure anymore. that he minimizes his losses. But, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, says Lix, sending back the, the weak HP villagers and uh, just go into town. Yeah, um, I don't know what he's going to plan to do, because as you mentioned, he's probably going to try to go to the pocket to green. But if he's still fighting like this against Steel, well, as you mentioned, it's going to be yellow versus green. And let's see who's going to make more damage. Obviously, Fat Dragon is pocket, by the way. I'm surprised about that. Usually it's Mr. Yo, but they changed that and Mr. Yo is playing as a flank. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's like what I was saying, where... Yeah. So because Vivi does love his Burgundian so much, you can have Lix go for like all of this crazy forward shenanigans. Hopefully that's going to give Vivi a bit more time to really uh, get going with the, the eco power of Burgundians. And then uh, just sort of assume that Mr. Yo can 1v1 his side and not really need too much help. Okay. Well, we're going to keep checking this. Look at Blue. Blue Ganji is doing smart walls. Look at the walls he's doing. He's not walling completely, but he has walled his wood line, and that's obviously fantastic. Really, really fantastic. I will try, if I can, I will try, if I can, to get into, into Bart's point of view. Let me just check, because it has been many days, and I will try to bring you Bart's point of view. But Mr. Orlu, 
all all Hello? the action all the action is there like yeah all it's the uh just the bills fighting back and forth overall count is actually three in favor of our cyan player over our red player i mean yeah it's mayan so you can uh count one villager off but still barls is doing a beautiful job of just not taking any really significant damage he's healing up his eagle scout in the town center always something that's nice to do with the american civs and now it looks like vivi is going to be dropping a forward barrack so there's going to be some i think feudal age scout pressure going on oh he did a mistake i'm just checking right now and he and q i'm believed to go up but he has no buildings to go up he has the resources oh no look at the pov people can't check in the stream and now he needs to make the mill, and that's really, really bad because Red is probably now coming for what? Oh my god, he cannot go up right now. Oh, you need two buildings? <laughs> He's gonna oh, make the building the, the house the... here. I, look I at think Vivi. this is just to uh, prevent TC locations. Arlo, also, notably, Vivi. yo, what up a 19 pop with a Civ that doesn't have a Nico bonus, which is uh, pretty crazy for uh, going for full archers. So that was a very strong Dark Age from him. And it's going to be double ranges right away. Ganji as Korean is going to get those armor upgrades for free. A little bit of a, a discount versus the, the Portuguese discount. So I think that we could be expecting some more normal stuff there in the top. Whereas uh, the south is still all chaos. We've got a, what, good 10 bills forward still. Yeah, I'm just checking 10 bills forward. I don't know if he's going to make the douche there. Would you make a, a TC there or just on, on, on his tunnel center? He probably cannot. I don't know what red is. Eleven villages. Is eleven ah. villages by by and look at his economy on the TC for for Mister Mister Leaks. We're gonna make now a mail, so he's not even thinking to to do uh, uh, another TC. What's going on? What is this strategy? This can work or not? Uh, he doesn't have enough wood for her town center because he's doing all of this walling in, but. I mean, there aren't any archers that are going to come by anytime soon, so I don't really see what the walling in of these lumberjacks actually does. And Valas is I mean, there faster. Uh, or look at Valas already. He's, he's going to attack that village. He's going to take that scout. Yes, yellow is now there. But Lix is in probably for sure. He's creating master. Lix is just going crazy right now. Really crazy. He's not doing village on his TC anymore. And another thing, well, he got this table on red base, but... Uh, Valas is so close there, so I don't know, man. Well, Yellow is coming, but I don't see a scout yet. Red is starting to lose more and more, and he's in Dark Age forever. He's still fighting. There's a spear. Oh, man. Master Lynx is starting like crazy in this map. And ladies and gentlemen, they waited a lot. And now they understand why Vivi's camera is not working. He knew <laughs> he was going to be in this kind of game, and he was going to be smoking 20 cigarettes in this game because the stress that Fat Dragon has now is insane. Arlo. Oh, and now Mr. Yo is getting pushed by Ganji. No blacksmith upgrades, just now starting fletching. Ganji already with a plus one, plus one. Of course, you get the defense free as Koreans, but still losing a couple villagers there is Mr. Yo. That is not what you want to be seeing. And there we go. There it is. This, this is, the, is the, one the... of the saddest TC drops I've seen in a very long exactly. time. I would say that the slowest or the latest... TC drop I have seen every in my life, and I have casted some games in Age of Empires, you know? So he's doing the TC, while you can see Bals doing a tower. Doing a tower, that TC most likely is not going to be up. And then you can see that Yellow has all the time less army than Green. That tone center, if it's not going to be up, and it's not going to be up, it's fully over. I really don't know what WWP is doing in a $30,000 tournament. What is this strategy? Uh, is it gonna work? He's gonna make the TC, maybe? Oh, he's gonna make it, Oh my man. goodness. Well, he's doing the tone is center. It, this isn't gonna oh. happen, is it, ma'am? Are... Oh, the he did tower. It. He did oh, it. He gets the TC. He did the tone center. It's it... incredible. And now that TC, 4,800 HP. That's why he's sending all the villages. He has all the Lambriacs. He's gonna send the villages on foot to create villages. An unbelievable game. He's gonna take what well, the tower first and then the tone center probably. Then he won't have any village on wood. But Lee doesn't need the village on wood. Why? He has 400. 400 right now. So with this amount of villages, he's gonna take the tower and you see Teal already with archers. That's that's incredible. And he didn't adapt. I'm a speechless right now, Mr. Mr. Olu, really.
What a weird game number one to start things off. It's going to be tricky for Vivi. His stable is forward. He can't wall himself in, of course, because of the uh, the rocky terrain. And he doesn't even get bloodlines. So as we get later into Feudal Age, he doesn't really have that option uh, against Valas. So really the question is, how is you know Vivi supposed to hold 1v2? Because there are archers that are going to come forward. There are already eight of them. And yeah. I don't know, man. How is Crazy. he just not going to roll over and die? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. He's not doing Villiers. Green is about to go up. Yellow is is, is going to be slower, so Valas is going to be faster to cast H uh, Arlo. So there's no chances in this game. This is over. Uh, well, it should be over. Yeah, no. I mean, Yo is also, what, five Vills behind Ganji? Like, Ganji is just uh, taking Yo to town right now. Ganji is destroying Mr. Yo. Yeah. But pretty much. Ganji 36 will list 21 army. Look at the military numbers. Maybe Mr. Yo with market can go up to Castleage, but the only thing that maybe, maybe Liz can do is maybe take the TC for Teal, but Green is gonna be in Castleage. Alright, and there's a village there on the left. Idle. Oh, the archers are finding now the Lambriax. So he's gonna get pretty much defeated. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I can understand this in a rated game. But this strategy for me uh, is uh, a signal or I think you could even justify it in a big tournament. It's just overconfident. This is one of those strategies that it looks amazing if it works, and if it doesn't, it looks like you're, you know, a 1K player. Yeah, that's truth. And I think they just wanted to open up with something to try and catch the amigos off guard, but the just the solid mechanics, defenses, and then uh, Ganji's offense was just a little too good for this. Yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I don't know. I'm a speechless. We are in 20 minutes. They are not resigning because these players are just try-hearted. But Yellow is now on the way to Castling. He has three villains more. His economy is going to be very nice. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, Blue Ganji, yeah, with all wall. Look at the walls he did. I mean, he wall all the map? Well, not really. Look at the wood between the stone at the back and the palisade. He leave a big <laughs> hole, you know? <laughs> but still, he has to go around a lot. And Yo is now on the way to Castle. But I'm sure that Mr. Yo really expect to be much ahead to his opponent. I don't think he expect to be behind. And he is behind. And now... Oh, yeah. D definitely. Yeah. In every sense, pretty much. The uh, the blue player, Ganji, has more army. He's faster to Castle. He has a better economy. He's going to have a nice, I guess, potential uh, power spike getting the, the defense upgrade right away. You can just really take those uh, fights quite comfortably. And uh, pretty much everything that could go wrong for WWP in this game went wrong. Well, but Liz has a sneak on Vala's base. He's walking all over the map. That's very important, right, then, Orlu? My goodness. Uh, what is doing yes. with that there? Not going to be doing a whole lot when you're still in the Dark Age. Now, long-distance lumberjacking. Okay. Well... Look at those arches here, and, uh, oh, well, Mr. Yo clean it a little bit, Barl's archers on uh, yellow base. He's going to have double stable and monastery. They keep trying, Mr. Orlo, like, and they're going to keep trying because Vivi going to go crazy with the Cavaliers, I believe. But the problem is that, uh, how you kill it here? It's true that if Fadragon gets some good battles, Teal doesn't have too much. Like Bals, okay, he has the villains, but he cannot help a lot with the army he has right now. Like Cavaliers plus two, gonna dominate. But the problem is that Kanji is just dominating Mr. Yo, but big time. Yeah, it's honestly just uh, some really impressive stuff. Just hitting that timing with a bit of a better, uh, faster Castle Age time. I mean, this this just kills people. Just getting the Castle Age even 30 seconds faster when you're playing Crossbowman v. Crossbowman, it's absolutely brutal and you know we didn't have the chance really to talk about the civs because of all of the early aggression but possible <laughs> i mean lithuanians on this map you have so many easy relics that i mean you have to remember that lithuanians with two relics are exactly the same as burgundian cavalier so they don't even get an advantage as far as that goes and yeah. like maybe you could say okay burgundians have a better economy but still it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world and balas already has two relics that's pretty crazy. The knights are just coming. Those knights are plus three already. Plus three already. So those cavaliers are 
definitely not gonna not gonna get too much of, the, of advantage you just see now yellow and purple going together try to kill blue somehow because le like they might be thinking why to go to the other side but if you don't go if you don't go to the other side then teal will will get into castles and now uh leaks is losing the tall center yeah you're not supposed to be losing the tc war as persians that's usually a bad sign <laughs> um now just stonewalling himself i mean Barls knows that he's still in a weak spot, right? It's not like he can comfortably deal with the opposing pocket. So he just needs to make sure he's defended, make sure he doesn't take any damage, and then know that, okay, my pocket and my other flank are in a really good spot. So yeah. it should be pretty much smooth sailing to victory from there. I mean, the scores really do tell the whole story with Licks rocking the 432 score. Yeah. Uh, the thing here is... Mm, like, seriously... Uh, do you need this strategy? I, I don't think you really need. I know that I've been asking before and you might lose, but <coughs> when you see that you fail and you lose one villain in the start and so on, you have to adapt. You have to give up. But, well, I don't know. I'm really also surprised. Look at the, the, the villains. He's not getting defeated. He has now so many crumbles, Mr. Yo. And now, Mr. Yo, explain me how he managed to kill everything again. What's going on? Um... I mean, he was just uh, taking the advantage of the fact that I feel like maybe uh, the Amigos were a little too eager to finish it off. Like, don't get me wrong, they're still absolutely comically far ahead right now, but didn't quite have the army to finish off Mr. Yo. And now we have Ganji in a bit of an awkward situation. There are 17 knights to 11 cavalier, but they are having to go from across pretty much the entire map. So it's a little bit uncomfortable right now for the Amigos, but I feel like they just need to not take absolutely catastrophic damage and they're going to be uh, smooth sailing. Okay, a lot of crossbows here by, by Mr. Yo. A lot of crossbows keep coming. He's doing the second tone center. And now, obviously, Balz is on the way to Castleage. So, yeah, it's basically three versus two, Arlo. And it's very hard to, to commentate those games because it is really possible that Fat Dragon and Mr. Yo killed when you see Valas with 63 villages, like free booming, three TCs, it's, it's likely to happen. Yeah, I mean, Vivi, he's got Cavalier, decent upgrades, but he's already a fair bit behind in terms of uh, resources collected compared to Valas. And yeah, this is just uh, not looking so good for WWP. I mean,. Yeah, he's gonna lose all yeah. the crossbows here. All the knights are coming here. Those knights are plus four already, plus four attack. You know, plus four attack. And now Lee's is remaking the TC. Amazing. He's doing another TC on Jello's base, you know. Unbelievable. What is this? Oh. You know, gotta bring the, uh, if we don't have the, the Maghreb map for our Nomad experience, Lix is just bringing the Nomad to Donut. Yeah. You start I mean, in one area, oh. then you go to another, then you go to another. Orlo, you know that I love you, man, but you came, your webcam doesn't work. Uh, VB webcam doesn't work. Elix going nuts. Did you talk with them? <laughs> like, hey, let's sabotage Battle of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Orlo, what is this? This is sabotage, man. We were talking that this was going to be the best series. It's still a lot of games to go, but my goodness, what happened with Master Lix in this one? Anyway, they are trying to make a battle here, and this battle, Orlo, can be for yellow and purple. Green has so many and he's plus five knights already. Yeah, I mean, they might look like measly okay. knights versus cavalier, but they are actually stronger units and yet somehow uh, WWP is pushing back. Uh, but some more knight reinforcements coming in. Yo has honestly been pretty impressive in how he's been able to maintain just a decent number of crossbowmen thanks to these four archery ranges Teal and getting that here. nice discount with Portuguese. But I mean, this still feels like you're being stretched way too thin if you're Vivi. And then, yo, I mean, he's not even, like, really ahead versus Ganji. So I've, I struggle to see where the advantage lies for WWP. Yeah. I mean, this is now completely 3 versus 2 in this area. Obviously, Purple and Yellow are doing exactly what they have to do. They know that they have to go all army. That's why, as you mentioned, Purple has four archery ranges. Yellow has... Three, four stables and one TC only. That's why he's behind in Villis and has the same army than Green. But that's happened because he's just doing all military. And the Cavaliers are... It will be lovely against any other civilizations, or not against Lithuanians. 
Nope. They, uh, Lithuanians have the power of relics on this map. I mean, just having two relics in each of your little, uh, starting yes, areas already. means already. that, yeah, you can just yeah. get your four relics of Lithuanians super comfortably. Yes, Burgundians do have their, uh, their nice team bonus with relics, but it doesn't really compare to just the raw strength that you get as Lithuanians. And now we're looking at the full-on rainbow here at, uh, Mr. Yo's base. It's impossible. It's not impossible. It's getting closer and closer. It's true that they are sending a lot. Military numbers 97. WWP 60 is 40 military more. It's just absolutely nuts. It's gonna be total destruction or are gonna be able the Chinese to win here? The scores say that Green is in the same position and now they are going to lose absolutely everything because the Nice is still floating all over the map, Mr. Orlu. All over the map and they are calling the GG. Amigos is taking the first game. Look at Barnes. Uh, I mean, look at Barnes' smile. Look at Barnes' <laughs> smile. Like, what is this? What was this? <laughs> My goodness, man. I, I, I. Well, tell me, tell me, because the you feels might be speechless. when uh, Valas has nine times more resources collected than Lex. <laughs> well, we can check. We can check. Lex did one of those games, but you know what? It's not the first time that we see this from Lex, uh, Orlo. We have seen Leaks doing yep. incredible games, and this this 27 bill is at the maximum, and then, well, never reach Feudal Age. We have seen this before to Leaks in many tournaments, honestly. it's Yeah, and then it has worked out, and then it's looked brilliant, but this, unfortunately, was the exact opposite. Yeah. Well, uh, the game could have been a great one. It was fun to watch, that's for sure. That's really important as well. But definitely it wasn't oh, yes. super competitive because it was three versus two from minute three, I would say. Most likely we could feel yeah. at that time that that wasn't going to anywhere because Bars defended so great, Orlo. Oh yeah, it was uh, absolutely beautiful. And Amazing. now we're going to be going to uh, our Game second two. game and we're just going to need to That's see... Fun. WWP sort of uh, recalibrate and see what exactly they are going to be able to do. Mr. Yo is going to be the yellow Gajurs in the pocket. And then Lex is going to be the red Huns on the You have to wait North a bit. Line. have to wait a bit, Lorlu, because my game, this definitive edition is great and it's loading now, you know? And now we're uh, getting okay. in. Anyway, I'm there now. It's, it's just take too, too long to, to get in. I don't know why sometimes, but still, we are there now, and you can go now with the introduction with all those crazy civilizations, and you were on point. Kumas and Gurjaras. Yep. I can be right sometimes. <laughs> you know, a broken clock is right twice a day or something like that. Play lottery, man. Uh, but Play lottery for today. the Amigos, we'll have uh, Ganji in the blue as the Italians on the north flank, Modri as the green Cubans in the pocket, and then Barls as the Cyan Bohemians on the south flank. And as the uh, the lovely Turkman was uh, sharing with you guys, this map, it allows for some funky strategies, which is why we see some civs that are not necessarily going to be going for your standard archer's flank and uh, just knight's pocket. Yeah, I mean, mm, Gurjara's here is a very interesting uh, one. I mean, what I like from this map, I don't think we have seen ever this, this composition, you know? Gurjara's hands on the Spanish. Like, and then yeah. you know, the, and the other one, Bohemians, Italians, Cumans. What do you prefer? Because that's really important. What do you prefer, Mr. Orlo? Oh, boy. I think I may prefer the Amigo Civs a little bit, but they're going to need to be really careful because you have those Deadly Gajur Camels. You have Vivi going to be going Conquistadors almost certainly. And I have no idea what Lix is doing with Hun's flank, so maybe just going Cav Archers. But I feel like this is still a late game map and the late game compositions, I think, are just going to be so insanely strong uh, for the Amigos, especially on the flanks with uh, Genoese Crossbowmen and then Halbs and Hofnitza. So maybe, maybe uh, WWP should have to do something. I mean, like, like Conquistadors has to be, has to be happening. Conks, Conquistadors in, uh, in, in Castle Age because, I mean... I don't know. It's uh, as you mentioned. They have the Spanish trade if they they have to trade and they can go for super long. But honestly, Bohemians, Italians, and Cumans in late game, Gujaras and the Spanish are not going to stop. Are really not going to stop this. Nah, I, I don't think so. I think that uh, Gujaras kind of fall off a cliff in late game. Like they're super strong in mid game, but they're not really uh, top tier post impsive. And uh, Cumans, 
the awesome thing with them is that you have the top tier economy and then you have the paladins that are even super speedy. You can spam cheap stables everywhere. You can spam hussars everywhere. Uh, I just kind of like them a little bit more. Uh, so long as you can just be careful in how you take your fights against uh, the potential camels. But because we have Genoese crossbowmen and uh, super strong halberdiers to potentially support them, I think that it's going to be all right for the Amigos. Yeah, but I have the feeling that in this one, WWP gonna do something. I don't know if these Gurjaras with 10 goats, they, their teammates send it to extra. It's gonna be an oath. How much? I know that you love these kind of numbers. 10 goats, it's how many villages, let's say, gathering food constantly? Uh, well, the way I like to describe it is that eight sheep, or goats in this case, uh, yeah. is the equivalent of one relic worth of income. So uh, one and a half food per second. You know, it's just like a relic, but if the relic was generating food. So that means that 10 goats are a relic and a quarter. Uh, okay. As far as just like food income that you get constantly from the start of the game all the way through the end. And that, you know, it does add up over time. Yeah, it's, it's something that this works for mid castle age, I will say, because in the start you don't know it, but maybe for mid castle age can be great to, to spam with two, three stables, or do you think not even for that? I just think it's a nice little bonus that gives Gujurs a pretty strong eco. You also have your extra forage bushes, and yeah, I mean, I don't think their eco is quite at the level of something like humans, but it's probably just a, a step down. Uh, camel scouts are nice on the more open maps. But I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue, at least early on. Okay. And yeah, I mean, it's just like the the new civs are always really interesting, right? And the uh, Indian civs here, they they bring a lot of really unique factors to the table. We can also see the uh, armored elephants for Gujurs, which are absolutely insane. Just a little bit worse than uh, Kelt rams against buildings. Wow. And they're also better against units. Okay. Okay, well, we can see how Fat Dragon, it's walling already with double Palisade against Bald for Emians. Bald is gonna be feel so happy. He's up with 24 population, 25 right now. And blue, why blue went up like this? Oh, he's walling like the, uh, he went up that early just to, to be safe and make a stone walls in case that the opponents are coming. And obviously- Well, I, I, I can't know. really blame anyone for one, wanting to play safe versus Lex. Yeah. Yeah, but Lix is not attacking. Look at what Lix is I doing. I mean, in this case, no. Uh, wow. In fact, Lix is... Uh, he's rocking the stone walls, man. I love to see it. Walling and booming. Absolutely no aggression. No action. No excitement. Okay. Just farming. But honestly, I don't know if this is a good strategy for her. For China, for WWP. In my opinion, it's not. They, if they don't do anything and they go just only for the Imperial... Well, you see a bar for yellow... Well, obviously, um, Kumas is going for the second TC. But as we say it, in late game, for example, Italians, Genoese crossbowmen, they just, with those units, that I think they just get everything from the Huns. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I mean, Genoese crossbowmen kill everything from Huns except siege rams. And even then, you have your cheap bombard cannons to help you out uh, alongside whatever you want from the pocket. And then Bohemians, I mean, yeah, they got hit a little bit with the nerf bat in the last patch, but it turns out that Hofnitsa are still a really good unit. And I think Spanish are going to struggle to keep up with that. Yeah, I agree completely. I agree completely. In the late game, for sure. But if Fat Dragon is going Kongs, the Bohemians can also go Monks. Obviously, they don't have now the bonus for, for the monastery. They don't have cheaper bonus now. But still, you can go monks. But he's going archer range. It's not going for the boom straight. Well, it really feels like red is booming. Uh, purple is gonna obviously going to make a castle drop because he's already on gold and stone. And then Mr. Yo will do what? Will do boom? Will do a stable? He has a stable already. No blast So he might do some boom. And with a stable just in case. Yep, and uh, as somebody uh, pointed out in your chat, uh, the Hun bonus and the Gujurs bonus actually do stack, so your camels are produced 45% uh, faster because the Huns have stables working faster and then Gujurs have camels produced faster. That's so insane, that could be really nice as the game goes yeah. on. Yeah, and because the speed, I mean, mm. the, the snowball can be, can be insane here. Can be really, really insane. Who paused? They cannot pause the games. At least that is something really, you know, so. It's, 
It just builds dramatic tension. Okay. Well, let's see if they if they continue or not, but uh There we go. Looks like uh, we did have Lix's scout finished off right there, but not really going to be too big of a deal. There is a barracks on the way, so I guess there is going to be some castle age aggression that is being planned here for WWP. Notably, though, Vivi has no farms right now. Okay, now he's just start starting to see them. I was quite confused there. But I think the crossbowman play from Barls should be at least reasonably well set up to deal with conquistadors. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. I don't know if he will do uh, university because ballistic might be very needed. I mean, if the crows are great, obviously the Kongs, if you if you mass them, they they kill. They, they, they kill the crossbows, really. I mean, with upgrades, for sure. I don't know what you think. Yep. Uh, and at least you get the cheaper universities with uh, Bohemians. Okay, I, I am starting to, to read this better. Red is not going to go uh, full boom. He's already doing the barrack, the plasmid. He needs the building to go up, but blue is going to go up faster. He has the buildings already. And, okay, he's not doing a stable. He did the barrack, market on blasmid leaks. And he's going to slower. Huh. The castle is going to be up now for Fat Dragon. He's doing the castle. And then we have now three TCs right away from Mr. Yo. And he's doing riders. I call them riders. I mean, I refuse to call them f by the full nick, the full name. Trivunch riders is uh, what I've been yeah. told is the, uh, is the well, correct uh, Gujarati pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, good for you. I'm not going to say ever in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, I refuse riders, man. And they are also elite riders, is what it is, you know? I mean, <laughs> seriously, man. Do you want that the chat is going to be loud all the, all the stream? No way, man. If I pronounce it that, <laughs> it's going to be impossible, man. Anyway, hopefully, guys, you enjoy with the channel. But it's what it is. And Mr. Yo here with those riders going and trying to, to check a little bit of the map. Green is on the way to Castleage and is now doing totally stable. But Green has... 48 villages already. Mr. Yo doing the 4TC. But if now the Kumas is going a lot of farming and a 3TC, which it can happen. Oof. No, Mr. Orlu. Oof. Yeah, I mean, Yo can probably catch up economically and he does get the bit of extra food income. But it's still like, when left to their own devices, humans have one of the very strongest economies in all of Age of Empires too. And that's just always been the case with this sieve. And it's going to be tricky, especially if we think that humans indeed have the better late game. But the uh, camels and the Shrevent Riders are super good at just countering the specific units that they are designed to counter. And I think it's going to be a matter of just how can you take those engagements as Mr. Yo, you know, camels versus cavalry, and then the Shrevent wow. Riders versus the archers that we see both of the flanks of Amigos going for. Hey, look at Lix. Lix is going Cal Vartiscans. They're going to go then full army. Hands with Cav Archers, then Yellow is trying to boom and... But this is insane. Please check the village. Stone Walls and Triple Mr. Range Yo. Cav Archers? Man, what yeah. year is this? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but no stable, so no bloodlines. He's going to go Cav yeah, Archers, now we're going to see the crowbots. But Orlu, I insist, and this is really, really important. Yellow has already the same villages than Modri. It's pretty sick um, boom by Joe. Yeah, I mean... This Mr. Yo guy is a pretty good player. He's a pretty good boomer and Decent. late game player in general. <laughs> Decent. But, uh, the but checking the resources collected, Modri is actually only barely ahead still. So, yeah, that's actually just really impressive for Mr. Yo. Uh, he's pretty sick. But um, they are cheaper cab arches, but you need to mass a lot of those cab arches because right now you have to raid. Otherwise, you can see how Ganji is sitting up already with two tones and doing a lot of crossbows and the action is going to start and he's going to start with a lot of unique units. Amigos is still 31 army, 18 for WWP, but right now they have more villains and more armies, so this is still looking good for them. Bohemians with two TCs, now Kumas with the third tone center, but uh, I really believe that when the hands mass a lot and he's gonna go one to see 50 cab archers remember what i'm telling you he's gonna go all army the hands and then
probably all Kongs and then just Mr. Yo going for Imperial or Mr. Yo will try to do now army. Oh my god, he's starting to make more and more stables, three stables and he's gonna spam what? Riders or camels? What do you think? Why not both? I mean, well, I think you can uh, justify going for, for both. I would say that maybe uh, the Shrivunch Riders would be a little bit more likely because Conks already deal very well with Knights. And Cav Archers, once you get an, an, uh, a good mass of them as well, whereas those units tend to struggle a bit more versus Mass Archers. So that's where the, uh, the, the Happy Protoss Shield Riders come in. Oh, but this is a mistake for Ganji. Look at his wood lane. He's going to be open, he's open, he's open. And Ganji now is going to start to lose Villiers. This is going to be inside. This is very bad. This is very bad because he has Ballistic in 15 seconds. And now you have the mobility with the Cav Arches. While the Crossbows, they don't have that mobility. And you don't want to face the hands Cav Arches power, Mr. Orlu. You don't really want, really. No, and, you oh. know, we talk about archers being good against cav archers, but that's really in a matter of they're just easier to mass up and they fire more accurately. If you can utilize the mobility advantage that cav archers give you, like, you know, say Lix is doing right now, then yeah, certainly. And if the numbers are pretty similar, well, then the cav archers are just better units pound for pound. But still, it's around 24 crossbowmen, two 13 cav archers, but now they're just going to be a thorn in the side of the amigos for well, quite some time, as they don't really have anything to catch up super well, unless we see a bunch of knights try and run away um, from Modri. Now, that's, the, that's what they are going to do. He's going to go raid everyone. He's now doing the second TC. He's going to raid down Modri. He's going to take some villains, and that's the problem, because if Mr. Yo just reach Imperial, and now, with nobody attacking Mr. Yo, he will be able to boost his economy, Mr. Mr. Orlo, and uh, missed, oh, that castle at the back? That's not the castle he probably wanted, but there's a lot of crows and knights. I'm talking in the middle for you, Mr. Orlo, and the Cav Arches are there gonna raid, man. And that's the problem. You're gonna be okay because you have a lot of villages, yes. You still do a lot of knights, but then Mr. Yo will be able to go up to Imperial faster. Much faster, I believe. Yeah, I mean, and we're looking at 15 villager kills and counting for those Cav Archers, and now Yo's ahead by a good 10 vills or so, and he is making that mix of the Shrivunch Riders and Camels, and so long as you can take the engagements you need to, uh, you know, using the counter units appropriately, this could be absolutely devastating. I mean... Oh, man. Ugh. I'm taking leaks. RB I'm taking leaks. values are dead even. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, he's getting closer. Village number is still ahead for Amigos, but those Cav Arches still, they're fighting against Leaks. They are just fighting against Leaks, but now, now we see the Camels. Look at in the middle, in the south, a lot of Kongs with the Camels. The Camels are plus two, yes, and those Kongs are plus everything. Orlu, Bloodlines, plus two, so tanky. They are killing a lot of villains. I'm checking now at the bottom right corner, and they are killing villains all over the map. And that's a real, real problem. He's even doing the plus one. And as you mentioned, the production is super fast for yellow. Thanks also to the hands bonus as well, which is great. Somehow, in the other side, we see Ganji putting now in some troubles uh, to, to leaks. But raiding now the pocket. And look at those camels with raiders killing absolutely everything, Orlu. Oh yeah, I mean, Gajurs are such a scary sieve to go up against <clears throat> at the, the best of times. And yeah, the Shrivunch Rider is able to dodge a lot of those arrows. We do have chemistry in right now. That's going to help a lot versus those camels. And uh, the issue is that Ganji was struggling to push up the hill into the Cav Archer mass. He's still ahead by a good 14-ish villagers compared to Lick, so that's actually not as bad as it might seem on paper. But now the Shrivunch Riders are going to be starting to raid, and these guys are so annoying when they're in your base, man. Well, it feels like it takes forever to clean Orlo. up. I'm checking also the Kongs as well. He's killing yeah. more villages. Those archers even got chemistry. He got chemistry. He got ballistic. So Bals, he's just spending a lot, but lost already 13 villages. And what I'm telling you right now is that Mr. Yo has 20 villages more. He's forward already with a stable Siege Workshop, Armored Elephant. And Mr. Yo, a score is a scary. We were talking about how to play as a pocket, but we have to give the credit to Lee and Fat Dragon. And in this game, they are playing absolutely amazing. So and this is what WWP looks like when they're doing well, right? I mean, you have Vivi and Lix able to make a lot of annoying things happen uh, aggressively, and then Yo just going for the big boom into smash your opponent in the face. Now the forward castle coming in, and those Gajur elephants are just so good at taking down buildings, especially, you know, in Castle Age relative to the other siege options available. But the knights are here, and they will absolutely clap the Shrivan Riders. That's oh. what the Tonks are needed for, but there's only 10 left. 
Uh, and look how those elephants has killed the TC. Remember that this cracked terrain, it get more damage to the units. Look at that TC with those elephants. It's going to, well, not because the knights are now there. It's going to disappear, not anymore. And well, well, well. Vili is still the same, by the way. And military numbers, the first time in the game that, well, he's even. It's also the same. What's going on? So close right now, Mr. Mr. Orlo. Let's go. Yeah, but the army value is just the Oof. big difference maker, I think. I mean, we're looking at around 50% more for WWP, and they are just not stopping with the, uh, the aggression. The uh, the Shrivun Riders are the fastest land unit in the game, pretty much, and they are easily going to chase down those crossbowmen and the Kongs there to support as well. They are just such a strong snowball unit. 35 kills on that blob and counting. And counting. And, and yeah. I mean, and you have 48 blue. crossbowmen for Ganji, but they just can't get anything done. Exactly. They are far. They are really far. I'm going to check now. Look at the villains. Least cast kill. It's insane. 32 villains. Fat Dragon 14. Mr. Yo 19. They are killing a lot. So that only talks how how big advantage Amigos got economically talking. That they are still with the same villains numbers. But they won't have now the timing, the momentum. Because Mr. Yo's score is not only scary. It's insane. And he is Orlu on the way to imperial he was thinking we lost the first game we can't lose more we need to go to the quarterfinals gg call wwp wow. amigos it's domination here orlu Whew, whew that was uh that was a, a little scary right there from wwp i mean there was just everybody firing on full cylinders licks and vv able to put their respective flanks on the back foot and then even uh, Lick's able to come in and do some damage to the enemy pocket. Actually, uh, Vivi's there at the end. 50 kills on that blob of conquistadors. Oh, my goodness. And then Yo just goes to Boomtown. And, uh, well, then he makes the enemy bases go boom. Please check the KD for Fat Dragon. 69 kills, 8, 8.63, the ratio. What is that? Did he lose something, Vivi? I mean, what the hell was that? And Mr. Yo at the end killed it a lot. Economy for Yo is not bad at all. 33,000. No, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I agree. Oh, and we didn't even notice. Paulo, check the relics for Mr. Yo. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This guy's well, good. Not bad. Guys, let's move on into game number three. Ladies and gentlemen, we have right now the game number three of this series. And this city, this game is extremely important. Why is it extremely important, Mr. Orlu? Because match point. Match point for the winner of this one, Mr. Orlu. And then yeah. let's analyze the civilization. Who has a better shift in your opinion, amigo? Well, let us see. For WWP winning the last one, uh, we'll have uh, Fat Dragon, aka Vivi, as the purple Ethiopians on the north flank. Yo is going to be the yellow Hindustanis, a.k.a. the old Indians in the pocket. And then Lix is going to be the red Goths on the south flank, already coming forward with a villager and a scout. <laughs> so before we get underway too much, Volos is going to be the Cyan Turks on the south flank. Uh, Modri, the green Teutons in the pocket. And Barls as the blue Poles in the north flank for the Amigos, as we now have a pause. Oh, my God. One of the things that I love to do the most is switching the cameras of sight, you know? That's it. That's smooth how it's, how it's changed. And they made a pause. So these pauses are not happening, man. Well, hopefully we'll be uh, getting back into this in just a moment. Well, I don't know why they, they are pausing the games, but they shouldn't pause the games. And uh, we have to talk with the players. Yeah, but we will solve this definitely internally. You have to, to hit them with a frying pan. Uh, probably what is, admin re. What admin re? Admin re? Why? Admin re. Okay. I do not they know. We're talking. Okay, they, 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 this fixed it. It's fixed it. Well, regardless, we have a game actually happening right now. Uh, looks like VV, or sorry, Lix's scout is going to somehow lose uh, one hit off. 
And the Elefanto has been slain in a very undignified manner. And now the villager is going to have to run on home. Scout has to be careful. It's only on the 3 HP, but Vala's already getting lamed. And uh, if I know Lix, uh, it's not going to end here. Okay, uh, let's see. Because it's lamed everything. And it makes sense because, look. Well, remember that this is explore map, but he's sending a villager and... You don't delay yourself a lot with the with the loom with the gods because he's in loom, right? Uh, Orlu. So it makes sense all yep. what he's doing. It's true that he has no scout anymore, but you don't need a scout in this map. I mean, it's important to have because you don't know what your opponent is gonna do now. But Lix is just going Lix again in a so important match. I love this because this all is so character. I mean, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be great, but well, he's sending three villages and now he's Chasing one value with three. So this would be worthy for leaks already. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Lady's just running around. The scout can't really do much because they would just get punched down. Uh, Valas was able to take his other elephant, so it's not like it's the end of the world for him. Uh, and then meanwhile, on the other side, Varl's already going to be going forward here to Wall. He is no stranger to the ways of the villager fight, so... This, uh, this definitely feels pretty Black Forest-esque, but we always have to remember that this is Boulder Forest, and there is this sort of highway in the middle of the map that you also need to make sure that is uh, fully walled. And Orlu, and all these cracked terrains, be careful with walling there, because your palisade yep. is going to get destroyed, like, instantly, you know? For example, look at balls. That palisade, if if that dragon is coming aggressive, that palisade just go down almost instantly. Mr. Orlo, almost instantly. And there's a lot of holes in the middle as well. So I'm not sure if the walls is the way to go in this map. I think the aggressive gameplay will be the best. I don't know what you think. Uh, is it allowed in the tournament to delete the crack terrain with farms? Like you take a farm, you place the farm down, then you delete the farm and it removes no. the crack terrain? No, no, no. Is that is happening? Uh, no, that, that, I haven't seen it happen yet, but that's what I would do okay. if I was playing if it was allowed. Yeah, but what I mean is, when you make a farm, the crack terrain disappear. Yeah. Well, I think I think you cannot do it anyway. So we will see if it's gonna happen or not. You know. So let let's see. Unless they patched anyway, it recently, anyway, it used to be a thing. I mean, it, the crack terrain. Even if they're doing, look how big it is. He has to put farms all over the map. Like you don't even have time to do that. You know. Well, you don't need to do anything other than uh, just place yeah. the farm. You can delete the farm instantly. But I think. I, I think Rossini checked that, you know? So I don't know oh, if okay. he could fix it, but I, I think mean, he checked Rizzini that. I mean, definitely you know? would know about that, so I yeah. trust him. Well, let's see. Let's see what is going to happen. Anyway, I don't know. Ooh, that village is going to be bye-bye now. I'm checking just the village in the south. Lix is still being annoying. Even if he's losing that village for me, that village did the job, you know? Yeah. And he's okay. Even if he's losing that one. Yeah, it's purple. It's um, and nevertheless, Valas does get the, the wall up and is fairly safe for the time being. We have Yo going up on 19 pop, uh, VV on 20 pop. So WWP are definitely pretty aggressively poised. And well, we'll see if they can uh, make anything happen with it because it looks like we're going to have the much more defensive approach from uh, the Amigos. I mean, Modri's already going to be dropping some farms. And might just even be a fast castle from him at this rate. Yes. Yeah, but they're still queued up. But, but they're open completely. Like, completely open. I mean, Blue is trying to go, but Mr. Yo is already in Feudal Age, is doing this table, and Balls need to hurry up right now. And Yellow is there with one scout. So that Villier is going to be dead already. Look, if we pay attention, and he is paying attention. So that Villier. If he's safe with the with the walling, can, he can maybe save it. But he's not gonna wall for more scout coming. I don't understand this gameplay, honestly. He's gonna wall inside. No, Molly is now with the scout there, but that villain is down. And now Billy is gone. The scout is going to go back, but Mr. Yo is gonna be sending more scouts. So yeah, Yo even know. went up without Loom. So this is just such a uh, an aggressive play from uh, our pocket on WWP. You now have the tower coming forward in from Vivi. Uh, Ethiopian's getting those extra resources upon hitting the next stage, already coming in with men at arms as well. And this is just a really tricky situation. We have some contingency stone walls on the way, but I'm not sure if this is going to be up in time with two more villagers being brought forward. But this is going to be a tricky situation no matter what. 
Yeah, pretty crazy. Well, let's see. I'm gonna focus in the middle if they have wall. Blue is coming. It's not that difficult to wall. He could wall forward. Not there! Why there? He could wall where Mother is with the with the scout, and then you wall both gaps, because right now. He's still open, Green. Green is coming with two villains, okay. I think Mr. Yo is doing a mistake here with the two scout. He should go really quick. He's gonna try to wall Modri. Definitely they are playing with the Black Forest approach, but the scouts are there. And this oh. is a fail. A fail by Modri. Well, it's two villains. Shouldn't be terrible for him. And he can wall now. now if he's bringing Modri. Oh, oh, yeah, there he we go. It. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yo scouts do have a long time before they can reach the other side of the map. And to be fair, both Green and Cyan should be able to go for a fast castle, I think. Modri has a ton of vills queued up, so you can just cancel those and get to Castle Age quickly. And but look at the south. is... Uh, Orlu. Oh, Valas yeah. Valas is struggling. He's struggling there, but he's doing stone walls. He's stone walls with the tower, with the men at arms, with, this, with the archer. And now Valas can make also a tower there if he want. He's gonna make it or not? He's gonna lose a village. He's not losing any. Oof. Oof. Oh, He's in that's the misplaced. range. It's not a good place, uh, Orlo. That tower. No, it, oh. it should be uh, actually two tiles further back. It, that still defends the gold mine, and it means that your villagers are always gonna be out of range, even with fletching. Yeah. Well, do we see the walls in the middle? Now purple is coming, and purple is coming in the south he gave up in the other spot because balls did a uh, full work and he's taking the short fist so he's giving a good economy and here is losing valas 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 is losing another villager whoa with the fletching as you mentioned valas is just having a big 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 problem i don't know if he's gonna lose if he's gonna open probably not but it's being so so deadly this one and now he can go to the north i think so he can go to the north to, to take the palisade. I think he's out of the range in the north. Yeah, he can break in. Yep, that uh, that is just a misplaced tower. Uh, yeah, And it's not a good sometimes one. that can cost you a game because right now this is looking like the Amigos. Well, they're not exactly loving life right now. Uh, Modri is on the way to Castle Age, will likely be making some knights in the near future, but it's just so much pressure oh coming God. in right now. It's open, it's still, no, it's not open, but now he, they can break, they are going with the scout, with the archers, he's gonna make more walls, look at the village, he's doing a tower, he can try to break in, my goodness, now this is pure BF into Battle of Africa, right? <laughs> Pretty much, man. Uh, Battle of Black Forest, or yeah, something. But they are, but they are, well, there's a lot of action, the I know the village down, uh, Leaks is destroying Valas right now. He's really doing. Oh yeah, I mean, this is just absolutely fantastic aggression. Wow from our uh, Chinese team here. And it's not like they're completely sacrificing economy behind this. I mean, their villager counts are 13 ahead. Eco upgrades are pretty decent, uh, just not for Licks, but for everyone else it is. And well, Modri hitting Castle Age, getting eco upgrades, but he only has one stable knight production. And it's gonna be a bit tricky to actually make anything aggressive happen, especially because they just have so far to rush to even get to the opponent's base. Yeah, let's go, let's go. I'm going to check now, guys, because I forgot with so much going on, and I'm going to check Valas point of view. You can keep going, Mr. Orlu, because oh, I'm okay. setting up. I'm setting up Mr. Valas. He's gonna be in a moment. And Valas, ooh, I can see this camera. Let's go, guys. Because you love this this POV, right? And this is Valas. Well, let's go, Mr. Orlu. Valas yeah, still view. looking to apply pressure. Mr. Yo on the way to Castle Age, as is Barls. Barls hasn't really done anything yet other than just a wall. I see a market blacksmith, so I'm not too sure what he wants to be going for yet. Uh, nowhere near enough stone for a castle. So it could just be booming for the time being, which is uh, a little bit odd, especially since they are going to be under so much pressure. Now another tower coming forward here from uh, the Fat Dragon. They do not want to lose this forward position. It's pretty crazy that with this timing, with this timing, they have been able to to really uh, go up Castleage the same time. Look at Mr. Yo, he smile. Look at, do you think he's pressure? Look at his face. I'm I'm just zooming in with the with the POV <laughs> now, and he smile. You know, he's he's happy. You know, he's enjoying the game. All right. <laughs> and LG with blue, yellow team colors. All right. Let's focus now with the full. With the full view, and purple has 
a insane amount of farming. Do you think that he overcommit to feudal, maybe? Because the walls are insane there, and they are going for the um, late game. I mean, they, they still just want to make sure something is happening aggressively. Lots of archers, stone walls coming in. I think this is fine. Uh, so long as you're buying time for Mr. Yo, especially, who's already dropping a TC number two. Uh, I, I think it's going to be okay. Modri, though, notably, already dropping TC number three. So it's a rough position for sure, but it's not exactly like an unlosable uh, position for WWP. Yeah, well, let's see. Let's see what is going to happen. We have Mr. Yo in castle. He has uh, three villages less than Modri, but he did the scouts as well. He has a stable. They are wall. They are not even wall. Well, no purple wallet. Okay, Vivi has wall. And Mr. Yo is, is doing a siege war shop. Okay, he's going to go huh. aggressive against Poles, but Poles has something to defend. Not really. He's mining a lot of stone, but not that's going to have a stone yet for a castle. And Red, in my opinion, it should be quite ahead to Valas, uh, Orlu. I mean, it is quite ahead well, to Valas. It's uh, more than four villagers ahead because it's also wheelbarrow versus no wheelbarrow. And uh, when looking at castle age times, Lix is going to be, again, a little bit ahead of Valas. So although both players are still in feudal age, we have to give a pretty sizable advantage to Lix in that regard. And now it's going to be a matter of can this north side where Varls was able to get to Castle Age and three TCs in you know, relative safety, can that be enough to push back WWP? Well, the thing here is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Purple will have also a huge amount of arches. He's going to probably, when they take that tower, I don't know, Bal will have to buy a castle. And if he's not well, he's three TCs, four tone center for green for Modri. The problem is that Modri is having a huge boom already. It's true that three TCs booming for Yo is, is really good. And now we need to see what Red is going to do. Red is on the way to castle H. And I really believe that he has overcommitted a little bit. Because now, if Balas just reach castle and drop a castle, with Janissars, the Turks won't do anything. Yeah, I mean, Goths really don't like facing a lot of gunpowder units, and that is what Turks excel at. So it is going to be tricky, but we have actually a uh, armored elephant on the way. Ooh. Now, these are nowhere near as good as they are with Gujurs, but, you know, they're still going to do the job, and they're going to start to work away at these walls. Yeah. But I still feel like Barls is going to be okay defensively. He's getting towards a castle. Uh, he can always just uh, use the market to get a little bit of extra stone if that's what he feels like he needs. And it's going to be a little bit of time, I think, before WWP can get damage on, and they are behind by 25 bills. Yeah, but remember one thing. 38 army WWP, Amigos 1. What that means, if Yellow is getting inside with those two elephants, armored elephants, and they're going to break because they are cracked terrain, they are going to get inside, but Balz is going to drop a castle. They are going for the full boom. They are boom, 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 boom. Are they going to break in or not? The castle is going to be there. He's going to be able to deny that castle. The crossbows are there. And is not in the range, those crossbows? Oh. I think he's not. He's going to kill maybe some Valir, but they are not going to break in. Ooh, oh, it's an it old is man. in range. At it's least... in the range. It's in the range if they break in. I'm oh. like, oh my goodness, and the tower is going to be down. This is going to be disaster if they break in. But he has to stop him for walling. He's it's stopping. No, he's not stopping. He's killing oh, few villains. No. But the castle is going to be up. And with that castle, Bal should be okay. He's sending millions, millions, millions of villains. And if he got Valisti before, will be much better. The Magola is not there in time. Definitely not. He's going to try to break in, but he's not doing. And then Modri should be able to dominate. He has 78 villages. Well, but with all this, still, the boom from Mr. Yo is solid. 40 TCs, and now Purple is going to do a castle here. And the thing is, he's going to go 1 TC Imperial. Vivi? Uh, I'm not um, sure. It looks like. Look, he's well, balancing the economy. Well, that is a lot of market use, so I'm going to just go with yes. Yeah, both doing a castle in the south. Very intense, very, very intense situation here. And we don't know who is winning. The boom, better for Amigos. But if the timing is go for, for WWP, uh, be careful. Obviously, if Modri is able to go up and go what? Paladins? Well, would you yeah, go paladins, paladins or Halves and Onegers? Um, probably Paladins, just because you need to be able to get to both of your flanks. It's going to be tricky versus the Hindustani Camels. Exactly. But uh, I think that's really where you just want to rely on your teammates, if at all possible. 
They are going in both flanks. They are going in both flanks. They want to kill the castle. They're going to kill the castle. Leaks. Wait, want to see Imperial with gods. Want to see Imperial with gods for Leaks. Baz is on the way to Imperial at the same time than Purple. Okay, so both are going to Imperial, both flanks, Purple and Blue. Then Green now is going and he's doing the supplies. He's going to go champions. It's going to go champions. But Purple will have Arbalest. So champions won't do anything. In my opinion, I don't know what you think. Obviously, if he has Onyx, it's okay. But if not, eh, pfft, I don't know. What it do is you think? a little bit surprising. Um, both pockets also picking up some relics. Yo is going to be on two. Modri is going to be on, I believe, three. Yep. And I guess the champions are going to do all right versus the camels. They get the extra melee armor, but the Hindustani camels also get the faster attack speed. Uh, but now we have everybody on the way to Imperial Age, except for poor Valos right now, and that could be the kicker, as uh, this Treb War is going to be absolutely one-sided in favor of our red player. Yes, that's gonna be that's gonna be a thing. Like with the army he's choosing, how he's gonna be able to help both sides? Because remember that Purple Vivi can also go for chemistry right away. Is to do it. In case that you lose the castle, you go Bomber Cannons as well. And Barls, he's just walling like a beast. All right. The Imperial Age is on the way. Also for Valas, let's go. But the timing is going to be there. Over 1 minute and 30 seconds. And then Mr. Yo, we didn't mention he can go Camels. But he can also go switch into Hand Cannoneers. So, yeah, let's certainly. see. With uh, yeah. the new Hindustani bonuses, Whoa. you get extra armor and you get plus 2 range with Shatagni. Like, those are some scary, scary hand cannons. Now, Barls is actually dropping an archery rage alongside another castle. So, I guess he could want to go for his own archers, but that is going to feel really lackluster against the, uh, the power of Ethiopians. Yeah, the real problem, in my opinion, is that Barls has right now 82 villages with only 46 for Vivi. But... Do you need a lot of villages with you are, when you are going Arbalest? Not so many. And Bulls is going archers. You don't beat Ethiopians in an archer battle. I don't know what you think, amigo. Uh, it's a little bit suspect unless you're another top archer, Civ. Um, and yeah, now we have some not. armored elephants coming down south. Okay, he's in Imperial. Trebuchet are going to, to happen here. Another problem is that least the gods, if he's not getting a sling, and I feel that Mr. Yo will sling as soon as he can, it's going to do nothing with gods 49 villages. But if he reboom, gods are very dangerous because you can spam forever. Obviously not going to be the case right now. He's repairing now that castle. Both will lose the castle. And definitely they need a lot more boom now, the Chinese team. Otherwise, if they can go longer... Big problems, Mr. Arlo. Big, big problems. Yeah, we do have Heavy Camel on the way. Iron casting as well for Mr. Yo, but the Treb War is still going to be in favor of our blue player simply by having more castles. That gives you more Trebs and all that good stuff. And right now, despite having a larger army for so long, it doesn't really matter that much. Yep. Yo's on 5 TC, he's on 121 villagers, but... The camels are not going to be that great versus the champions, even though they do attack faster. Definitely they are not. And we have Ornegers. We have now Ornegers for Modri. Ornegers for Modri. They have the Ornegers, the Trap, the Bomber Cannon. I'm very surprised that they didn't ban this map. Imperial Camels already. Are the Imperial Camels going to be able to dominate? They have 160 HP. And the champions with also Janissars. Ooh. Well, Bomber Cannon now for green. The castle is going to be there. Now the camels are coming. He's coming with the champions. So I believe that now Mr. Yo is going to notice that maybe that wasn't the right unit. But there's the camels here. He's going to try to do the job. He's going to kill what? The siege. He's going directly to the siege. But he won it. So he's not going to kill anything. He's going to kill the Bomber Cannon. Not the Trevor. Uh -huh. Now Mr. Yo is going to have a problem. And here, here Modri should do the job because there's no army. Mr. Yo's six army. While the other is 15, 26. And now they have the boom with the champions. But okay, champions might be not the best choice you think, guys. But champions against nothing. Who is winning? Orlo. Um, ah. I'm going to go with the champions. Um, Me too. Just because, you know, having something's better than not having something. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I respect if you believe otherwise. What do you think, guys? Do you agree with Orlu? Orlu is a domination <laughs> caster, guys. A total domination. But now look at this sarcastic caster with the champions, with the Janissas, Bomber Cannons, Trebuchet going forward. And 
Look at those Imperial Cannons. Why he's not switching in something else, Mr. Yo? Mr. Yo is the one who can hold a little bit, but now Red is doing hand cannoneers. The problem is not the army you have, if the production. And with the gods going hand cannoneers now, it's not gonna work. You don't have military. He has two army. He's housed it. And now he's gonna make a castle here. And WWP are gonna be in a problem, in a real problem here, Mr. Orlu, because they are going to be most likely 2-1 behind. Ooh. Yeah, and I don't think this is what a lot of people would expect. I mean, you heard from the interview that, that WWP is looking for nothing less than top four, which I think in a vacuum is what most people would expect from them. But the Amigos, man, they are out for blood and just able to once again deflect that early aggression, get their economies where they need to be. And they're just looking super solid here. Still way ahead oh economically. God. The Imp Camels are Kill doing okay. Okay, they're killing everything! The Imperial Camels now are wrecking absolutely everything! Mr. Yo is killing all the units now! He's killing absolutely everything! He's gonna go for the trap! What's going on? Mr. Yo! 43 army, 200 population! What a base! What a player! What a player this one! With all the camels he has, he's taking absolutely everything! Killing two players, killing green, killing teal! And now, he's gonna clean everything! My goodness, what's going on? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the camels are really scary. I mean, even if their attack isn't super high, they at least have a very fast attack speed and they have tons of HP Oof. and move very fast on top of it. But I feel like the sheer number of champions with a good 56 in the queue, I feel like we could just be seeing Mr. Yo get ground down. I mean, he's trying to sling his allies. He's trying to maintain his own military numbers. And I feel like this is a battle of attrition that uh, WWP cannot win. Yeah, but Red is, is now having can cannoneers as well. If you get the support and he can get 20, 30 hand cannoneers and the re boom, then maybe they can hold. Obviously, Purple is still on one tone center and Barls is still not killing anything at all. He's still there holding the position. He has the Arbalest, that Purple has the Arbalest too. Similar amount of army. And here they are still doing the job. WWP has more army than Amigos. This is incredible. This is seriously the incredible. The hand cannon kills are starting to build. I mean, hand cannons wow. and dots, it's not something we really think about all that often, but right now it is exactly the unit they need just something to help deal with those champions help mitigate the fact that camels are sort of just lukewarm against them as opposed to you know being very strong there's only yeah. seven military right now for valas he's not going to be able to contribute a whole heck of a lot there's one random arbalest from the other side of the map but i don't crazy know about stuff. that one i don't know crazy but, stuff. yeah this is already in a far better performance in the, these fights than i thought the wwp would be able to and uh yeah i gotta love, give a lot of credit to them for that even if they lose this one yeah, I mean, they are playing. I mean, Mr. Yo is playing fantastic. Obviously, they are still at the limit for sure. But the Turks, what the Turks has, Mr. Mr. Orlu? Six army. He has nothing. He has really nothing. So if he's just taking No, he has six else, army. Come on, man. Okay, okay, okay. But you know what I mean? Come on, Troller. Is that <laughs> yes. kill that? That Bomber Cannon or not? You need to micro properly. Now fortified walls in the north from Purple. Purple is at the limit. He has Bomber Cannons, yes. He has a market? No, he's not doing. He's doing now a second TC, Vivi. Good job. And military numbers is still Amigos with more. The problem here is it really looks like if they keep booming and get in there, uh, well, if they are unable to finish them, imagine if now they reboom uh, Orlo. Yeah, my concern is that the economies of both flanks for WWP are still very reliant on the sling from Mr. Yo. And Mr. Yo can only get up to 200 population. That's pretty much where Modri's hanging out as well. And I just don't see how, with half the villagers, uh, we're going to see Vivi able to hang on against Barrels. Okay, let's see. Let's see, Vivi, what he's doing in the north. A lot of Arbalists, Bomber Cannons. These Arbalists from Ethiopians are better, but... But Bal's got so many, so many Bomber Cannons, as you can see, he's doing the job. Those Ethiopians don't have all the beautiful libraries they, they could get. He should go with those camels, but he's not deleting. And now, Vivi is with a big problem. This is open all the time. He has been open all the time. Oh my goodness. Oh, okay, the camels are there. Bird. And in the south, they're still fighting. They need to kill the owner. And honestly, what is crazy is that they're still in the game. Uh, Orlo. Well, yeah, it's crazy. Just by existing, these siege weapons are pushing the hand cannons back, and then once the hand or once the champions and halbs get in close to the the camels, they are taking some pretty efficient trades. We do have trade starting to come in 
for WWP. We also have it coming in for the Amigos. So both teams are getting set up for the late game. And the issue is that Vivi is lacking so many upgrades right now. He actually doesn't even have better Arbalests because he doesn't have Thumb Ring, whereas uh, Barrels does, and he doesn't even have all his armor upgrades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's missing quite a lot. He's missing quite a lot. Those are... He's at the limit. He needs to kill those. He does have the numbers. He's Sweet 7 army only. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean, if Mr. Yo is trying his best, they will have to try their best in the last... Well, in the next game. Because I don't see that now, when this Bomber Cannon has got 14 range, they can stop this. Mr. Yo still have a lot of farming and a lot of farming, but as you mentioned, Mr. Yo has to save both. That's the problem. Yeah, and I just don't really think that's feasible. I mean, just having this enough siege support in the south, enough siege support in the north, and that's just something that WWP just can't compete with. They have less than half the army of value and numbers. We have some, uh, some Obuk on the way as well with the elite upgrade. Bombard Tower coming in. One of my favorite units. It seems to be game, guys. It seems to be game. An amazing battle by, by the Chinese team. But Modri and Barrels, also with the support from Valas for sure, they went for the, let's say, greedy approach. It was tricky, yes, but it, it's working. It's working in the north. And Mr. Yo again is cleaning everything. But the problem is he cleaned everything in one side. He's going to even make a doubt castle. Oh, my God. He's cleaning all in the north. Unbelievable. In the south, he's still going with those camels. Are you kidding me, man? Are, are, are really you kidding me? Mr. Yo still put it back. He killed everything with the camels to balls. Wow. But now, as you were saying, ma'am, in the south, we've got, like, what, five bombard camps with artillery. We've got soon to have ironclad siege onagers. Now, Turks are going for bombard towers as well. And this is just something that WWB cannot deal with. Mr. Yo is allowing his team to survive, but they're not really getting anywhere, either economically or militarily. Yeah. Well, they, they are trying to reboom, but they cannot really reboom him. Vivi has 82 villages only, 75 for red, while already Valas over 100 villages, which is starting to be already a solid one. And now look at that bomber tower. Okay, is that open? No, the cams are coming. Need to be careful. The trade is not even <laughs> a, in a safe position. Now it's going to oh. good. Okay, ooh, don't could, man. If you could, you help Mr. Yo. But, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Orlu, pretty crazy game, guys. And uh, we have... Uh, 2-1 for Amigos. We were talking that this series would be pretty sick and uh, not being disappointed, man. Uh, Orlu, not being disappointed. Not in the slightest. Ooh, oh, beautiful Siege Donager hits in the south. Look at that, but we're in those camels. Now more Siege Hornets and that's Janissars. And ladies and gentlemen, we might see the GG call in a moment. If they are not calling it, it's because they are dreaming with something that is not going to happen. 52 Army WWP and Amigos, 147 GG call. And I have seen the smile from the Amigos. Valas include Bals and Modri. 2-1 for Amigos that only need to win one victory more. One victory more, and they are in the quarterfinals. It's, it's, it's there. They need one win. Mr. 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 Orlu, fantastic. 300 champions for Modri, 250 for, for Yo, and uh, amazing play by Amigos. Yeah, I mean, this is just really impressive. And the thing is, it came from all three players. They all had their moments uh, where they were shining Modri from pocket. Barrels just doing so well booming and defending on the flank. And then even Valas, although he fell behind early on, was able to come back and then just get so far ahead of Lix, able to support with those uh, cannon units. And this is just looking like a really scary team with our uh, BF Amigos. And WWP, they're going to need to bring it on their last home map. I think I think they they are going to to to, to enjoy it soon that they say that we are not BF anymore. You know, it's true that the previous game they they also made it work like it BF, and it definitely did it. Economy Modri with almost the same economy than Yo, but the problem was that except the balance that was similar to Lee's, Look at the difference between Barls and Fat Dragon. Huge difference in the economy. You know, social 122 and 91, and then the timing and the momentum was also for them. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it is. And this is Battle of Africa, game number three. And if they win the next one, 
Amigos is in the quarterfinals already, which will be, in my opinion, an upset. Yeah, sir. Game number four, the hype is real because if Amigos is winning, one of those teams that you expect to see in the top four will have to play a decider the next, the next week, you know? And that's something they want to avoid because also it's going to make them probably to be in a worse position in the, in the quarterfinals, even if they qualified. So that's something to take also in consideration, yep. Mr. Orlo. Yeah, I mean, you want to advance and you want to advance as early as possible. Otherwise, you're going to be facing one of the higher seeded teams. And that's just not something you want to do in the quarterfinals. You want to wait until the latest possible time. Absolutely. But we'll see if WWP can make it happen here in game number four. The map is Savannah, a.k.a. Arabia. Got Licks in the red as the Malay on the flank. Uh, then we have Mr. Yo in the yellow as the Magyars in the pocket. And then uh, Fat Dragon Vivi as the purple Vietnamese on the north flank. As uh, Vietnam, as you mentioned, and he's facing Teal, Bald Dravidians. Vietnam or, or Dravidians? Well, we will see. Franks or Mahiars? Didn't pick Berbers. He went for Mahiars. Do you agree with this choice? And, and in the South, China. China is one of the best civilizations for sure in the game to play Arabia. And uh, what do you prefer, Amigo? And thank you for those. Um, uh, Mahiars or Berbers? I, to face I think Franks. it's pretty even i think vietnamese and chinese are about as good as one another uh i think i like franks a bit more than magyars but magyars can still make a lot of very aggressive things happen and then dravidians and malay i think are on similarly even footing so i, I don't really see either team with uh, much of a save advantage here okay so let's see what is gonna happen here for now i'm just checking purple uh purple side fat dragon and uh well, three villains on wood for now. Vietnam. Uh, it's Red going to do something crazy. Now that they are 2-1, I think they're going to play in this game. Finally, a standard. What do you think? Yep, and Malay aren't really the Civ that wants to go forward and just lame you like crazy. Uh, I mean, they're the ones who just kind of want to chill, sit back, uh, really leverage their strong economy. And we'll have to see what Lix is up to. He does only have the... Uh, three on wood right now, as does Vivi, I believe you said. Yeah, so already this is a little bit less typical. Okay, we're going to see now a little bit of Barl's point of view. Let's see how the Polish player is going to be playing. He's pushing already, already the deers. I love these transitions, guys, to the POV. And you can see, guys, they are on voice chat. Do you think they are talking a lot? They don't have to talk a lot. Let me say, oh, um, what do you think? Probably just keeping it to a minimum. I mean, everyone's going to be trying to focus as best they can. Um, you know, just communicating where they need to. And I don't really see either of these teams kind of completely fumbling that area of their gameplay. And with this POV, we see something that is being super popular right now. He's going for the mining camp before the mill to go up extremely, extremely extremely fast okay that was an overlay that shouldn't appear sorry and uh wow he's gonna go up so so fast with look it, at that it's population. amazing how aggressive the meta has become i mean we had all of those nerfs to walling maps are just much more open now and we're seeing barrels go up on 18 pop that is uh pretty wild i gotta say i mean you just want to go into archers as quickly as humanly possible and you just want to mess you just really want to mass archers. I feel like that's typically the win condition in uh, sort of very standard team games these days. Crazy, man. Really, really crazy. Okay. Well, we're going to see what's going to happen. Obviously, the pockets are going to go scout, right, Mr. Orlu? And uh, green and yellow are going up. And uh, mm, teal. It's incredible. It's we were talking. It's 18 population, seriously. Like, this is disgusting. 18 population. Uh... Remember when, like, 23, 24 pop archers was the meta? <laughs> yeah, yeah, even 25, you know? It was in the yeah, song times. Yeah. That was uh, when I was five years old, you know, 20 years ago. So yeah, I, yeah, I cannot exactly. remember. I cannot remember so so well because of that. I was too John, you know? But well... I mean, um, as somebody who, who actually is 25, I... I uh... <laughs> I remember the first build order I learned was 24 what? pop archers with, what, 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 uh, with what, what, Wait, wait. Let's go for the real main 
point here. What do you mean? Someone that is real 25 is some kind of, of indirect to me or... or no, what? no, no, nothing. Okay, okay. I, uh, okay. I, I, there was absolutely no subtext to what I said. Okay, okay, okay. No, let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going before the topic get dangerous. <laughs> anyway, anyway, twenty one population for purple, uh, eighteen population here. It's obviously going slower. Do you think in a map like this, because this is a standard, oh, well, it's Ravidians and you get 200 extra wood, double archery range already up, or getting up in 8 minutes, 50 seconds. Do you really think it's hmm, worth it in this map? Because I have seen this in Coliseum, in those close maps, but here, it looks a little bit tricky to me, because you won't have a great economy, and now you have to make the mill. I don't know, but they still have a lot of ships. What the hell? It's crazy, seriously. Yeah, I mean, this is the sort of thing that only works if you uh, lure in your uh, deer equivalents and Dravidians getting that extra 200 wood upon reaching the next stage. I mean, it makes a it makes a big difference. So we'll have to see how Barls can sustain his economy behind this. Um, but it's going to be, I think, a much, just a much more standard approach here for Vivi. Still pretty fast up, um, but not anywhere near as much as his opponent. Licks uh, going pretty quickly up as well, especially with Malay. But the player rush distance is relatively far, all things considered, so I don't think the super aggression is going to, like, just kill anybody unless there's a big slip up. Okay, let's see. Let's see, because now he's walling, but he's doing now the first archer range while his opponent is already there with three archers. So he's already three, four archers, and his opponent got nothing. He has to wall everything. Well, if he wall everything, he's fine, obviously. Uh, God, that's how I walls. live my life in Age of Empires. Ah. Just wall everything and then you're fine. Yeah. No. Then you feel you safe and happy. It's not fine because you are casting, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, sorry, I mean, I, I know what you're talking. I try the same and, I ca and I'm casting too. So, uh, it's not fine, man. <laughs> if, if we were playing, eh, maybe, you know? But still. Yeah. Anyway, let's see the walls here. He's coming with a scout and a spear for a dragon as well because he wants to wall like in the old times, Orlu. Team walls. Purple and yellow are going to be walled completely. And Mahiars, I love it because you kill the lions with one hit. Look, in the middle, bam. Yep. See you later. That's very nice. Get punched. Fun fact, the Magyar bonus doesn't actually kill wolves in one hit. You just get like around plus 30 bonus damage against them. So if you go to the scenario editor and modify the wolves to have like 500 HP, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't kill them in one hit. Don't give ADS. Don't give ideas. Uh, explain me why why Lix is not walling between that Vlavzit and an archery range. I don't understand that. Why he's not doing a house there? He's letting it open to, to bring the opponent army inside? Because I don't get it. These kind of things happens a lot. Anyway, in the middle we see Valas with Vals going all together, but they are fully walled right now. Still, they can probably break those areas, but the good thing is that you are not going to get surprised, and now you got the answer. He's doing a Palisade Gate, so... All good. Yep. Actually, that's two tiles, right? So units can still escape? I think yeah. so. Yeah, uh -oh. looks like it. And now, Mr. Yo in some problems. There's many scouts, many, many scouts, three archers. I don't know. Well, he's coming with the scouts as well. He will have to micro. He's going to lose that village. Probably not. He's doing now the Blasmith. Okay. Oh, did he lose that Blasmith? Because I saw the foundation going down. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Mr. Yo is going to be in problems. He's really going to be in problems if he's getting inside. Now, he should delete that or he's going to lose 150 wood. I don't know if he's going to delete. I'm going to check it out. But he deleted. Yep, deleted. He deleted. All right. Purple is coming. Yellow is there. Remember that those Mahiar scouts are stronger. Why? They have forging. He doesn't have any other upgrade. But right now, if Mr. Yo was having gold, he could do bloodlines. But it's not the case. He's at the limit with the resources. So he's going to chase those. And this is why... Maybe walling that greedy is not worthy, Orlu, because the Palisades right now are super, super weak. Yeah, and we just live in a different meta, right? It's just so much more aggressive. The Palisades are weaker and take longer to build and are more expensive than in the olden days. So, yeah, this is just a very greedy play because you're investing so many resources into uh, something that only was uh, a little more than a paperweight when it came to defense. Uh, nevertheless, these guys are just dancing around with their armies, and the Frank Scouts and Magyar Scouts, without any other upgrades, are going to be uh, equally trading versus each other. 
Yeah, they are defending properly. They are defending properly. They has a forging now. We have to be careful and see what he's gonna take this battle. I think Teal is doing a better job. I don't think Mr. Yo is gonna have a good a good battle here. Definitely not. They are losing a lot. Balz, Valas, and Ganji are now doing a domination mode activated. And now in the other side, Red, if he's taking the pallet side, ooh, well he made the house. I was telling you why he's not there. And now the scouts are coming. Mr. Yo is gonna lose a villier. He's gonna lose a villier, ladies and gentlemen. Balz, Valas, and Ganji are getting there i don't know if it's gonna happen or not but it's possible he's doing a skill bar in armor he's not even mining gold while valas is already with three villains on gold and this is frank's frank's economy valas economy man it's amazing he's about to click up to castleage and amigos the black forest players and i put those in quotes are doing the job mr orlo are they gonna be able to dominate or not well Ooh. they have a decisive army advantage right now and just the way that arabia works these days is that it's so snowbally that if you're falling behind it's very difficult to catch up as you're saying valas is on the way to castle age he's starting to get his own upgrades we do have licks clicking up and with the power of malay he's going to be up to castle age yeah. very soon but he just doesn't have that many archers to go for a big counterattack play and it's not like Gandhi's going to be too far away from clicking up either so we still have to really appreciate the spot of the amigos right now Amigos are in a great spot right now. The two scouts are there. They have cleaned the army, yes. But Valas is just there with a double stable. Will you make a third stable? Or maybe it's too much because at this point, maybe all in is the way to go. I mean, it's not how I would play personally, but I think you can totally justify it. I mean, you can think that, okay, the uh, WWP guys are going to have a really hard time just continuing to defend. So just keep on applying pressure. But it also opens up a bit of an opportunity for w WP to come back if they're able to uh, recover economically. The big issue is that it's age of kill the pocket these days as the pocket just has such a hard time defending compared to the flank. And uh, Yo is the last one to castle age. And that is a terrible sign. It's a bad sign, yes, but both flanks are also faster than the other flanks which is also good because valas will have to decide this is crucial valas will have to decide where to go i'm going to go to the flank i'm going to go to the pocket where i'm going to go and he is gonna be in a well in in in, in a crucial decision i know that he looks like a cold man but i believe he's human right so what that means is gonna be in some problem now and this is very good for mr yo because now red is going to ganji ganji is gonna be in a big big problem he's forcing him to make a tower and then mr yo is gonna go up to castle in a moment well he still Do don't have the goal Ooh. Do we oh, see wow. Lix trying to commit right here? He doesn't have Lissix in just yet. The tower is now completed. Maybe some villagers can get sniped. It looks like they're trying to be uh, ferried through the watchtower. Uh, Lissix still a couple seconds away from completion. So it's definitely still an awkward position. But if we can start to see with Ballistics some engagements being forced by a red player, and that's exactly what we're seeing Ballistics now coming in, that could oh. be absolutely critical. Knights coming in here from green. They do have good upgrades, but... Oh, this is a really uncomfortable spot. Lix oh. really making the most of that faster timing. Exactly. Lix is against three players. This is great for the opponents. Why? Because now Vivi is going to push in the north with a lot of crossbows as well. And even if he's losing those, he's killing as much as he can. He's trying to kill all the arts. He's killing to Balz, killing to Blue. He killed it also to Ganji. And he is just recovering the time for Mr. Yo. And we know how Mr. Yo is going to be able to recover. He has a lot of experience. So we will see. He's doing a second stable. He's on the way to castle, but the problem is that Valas, three TC is almost already done, and Frank's economy, they have to do stuff to happen on Valas' base as well. What do you think, Mr. Yeah, Harold? I think that we need to see a position for WWP where both flanks are ahead of their respective opponents, and I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to pull that off. We do have quadruple range at home for Lex, going full 1 TC right now, uh, but the actual numbers are still quite low. Yeah, but makes sense. I mean, he lost quite a lot, but he, he denied. And now he's wall completely. He has the crows. He has ballistic. That's the good thing. With ballistic, he's going to be able to hold. He's going to be in a better position than blue for sure. And now yellow is trying to go around to Valas. Those scouts not going to do too much. But purple is inside on Barl's eye, eye, eye. Well, the flanks are really getting a huge advantage to their opponents. So what you prefer, guys, here? Flanks ahead or the pocket? Because right now, the military numbers is getting closer and he's killing a lot. A lot. Yeah, this is balls. absolutely huge plays. 
WWP, they needed to make something happen with their flanks getting to Castle Age faster, and that is exactly what they did. So great sort of game awareness, knowing exactly what they need to do. And that is a lot of dead Dravidian villagers there for Barls. Some knights are coming in to reinforce, but I mean, just having ballistics there, so helpful. VV adding another town center. And uh, he's actually only on two archery ranges, but he was able to just sort of preserve a lot more as these villagers are on a safari going across the savannah right oh, now. But there's a problem now. There's a problem now. Yellow need to go and help because Lix is in problems. Lix is in problems, but the TC is there and the, the archers are with ballistic. It's still no ballistic. Lix is surviving. Lix is surviving. And right now, Purple is doing an amazing job. Mr. Yo obviously doing extra town centers. He has already a lot of knights on the field, but Vala has a lot of knights, man. He has... 12 nights and 57 villages. He's the best boom in the game. I still think that with Vala's pocket, they should have the advantage. But it's oh, not very goodness. tricky. Oh my goodness, so WP. many more dead villagers. Oh my god, Barls is losing a lot. My goodness. Well, I mean, I don't know anymore. Look at the military numbers. WWP with 64 army. It's incredible how BB is now playing this one. He's killing so many on the left. And... Uh, he has a scout there, and with the scout, he's defending with the scout. Look, it, they are working like a shield. Oh, yeah. it's, it's awesome. The, this is just absolutely fantastic coordination, game awareness from WWP. They're in a really rough spot with their pocket being so far behind. But And don't get me wrong, Yo is still behind economically compared to Valas. But having the flanks be in such awkward positions can make up for that. Because especially, you know, we're in the 3v3. You get two flanks and only one pocket. I mean, yeah, pocket's generally the most important position, but I'd still rather have the Oof. two flanks alive. But look at now Orlu in the south. Look at now Orlu in the south because those knights are plus two, plus two. It's true that Bala has plus one, plus two. He has 20 villains more, but they don't have army. And if they don't have army, there would be a point that they can raid also Valas or not. What do you think? I think they should be able to without too much yeah. issue. And like I was saying in the beginning of the game, I feel like the meta these days for Arabia team games is just so centered on those archers and just getting as many of them as humanly possible, as quickly as possible. And wow. we just Look were able to see WWP do a bit of a better job of that. He's killing so many knights. I know that Barls is now trying to catch up there, but we have Barls with 34 villages. 34 villages is insane. And remember that Vietnam, if they reach now Imperial, it's always oh, open. It's open. They are killing both, both flanks. Orlu, oh, they yeah. are destroying and, you know, the flanks. This, it was looking pretty grim for WWP, but this just goes to show, I think, the difference between a map like Arabia or Savannah you mean for and amigos? a map like uh, Colosseum no. or Haboob, where yeah. I don't think that this would have been possible to make this comeback happen for WWP just by, okay. you know, getting that faster castle time and taking the smart fights. I think that Yo would have just died. And I think that just goes to show that there is a little bit more complexity with Arabia and, you know, just another example of why it's the gold standard AoE2 map. Yeah, now, now this battle obviously is going to be good. Well, it's still... Still is killing a lot. And ladies and gentlemen, check the resources for Malai. He's still killing a lot. Now he's losing the army, but doesn't matter. He did the damage already. He did a lot of damage here. And now he's raiding with the scouts. He's already on Vala's base, being annoying, not killing a lot, but taking somehow some economy. 57 villages. Vala's 80 villages, okay? Vala's is still with 80 villages, but Red is on the way to Imperial. And Purple? Is gonna go up to Imperial in 30 seconds. Are we gonna get that decided game? I certainly score. hope so, just because, you know, you, you love to see matches go the distance, and this is what we were hoping for with the series, and it's definitely living up to the hype, I would say, and I think Lick's really just showing the power of the Malay economy. I mean, I think that you can kind of think of it in a similar way to Vikings, except Malay, not quite as good economically, but still with better archers. And just hitting these timings is just absolutely fantastic with the serve. Yeah, and now what Mr. Yo need, he doesn't really need with those knights to raid anymore. He needs to go together with purple and red. Why? Because when they have Arbalest, when they have Arbalest, he's going to be sick. It's really going to be sick, right or not. And that's going to be amazing. Oh, boy. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, Volus adds TC number four, which is going to be great for his economy, but he is going to be very slow to the Imperial Age, and Castle Age Knights just do not stand up to Arbalests, even without chemistry, just Arbs with Bracer. And uh, howdy ho, Imperial Age coming in at 32 minutes for Licks in a game like this is, you know, really impressive. And he's still got three, four ranges, in fact, and he is going to be trying to make something happen very soon. 
Yeah, but this is gonna be difficult. It's difficult, Omega. It's difficult. Well, Red will have the plus three. Of course, now he has more army blue. That's a problem, but Mr. Yo is coming from behind. He's coming from behind with a lot of army. Yes, we see Valas gonna be up to Imperial in a moment. Well, he will, but the time... I mean, they are on a timer. I don't know what you think. It, it, it looks like they are on a timer or not. Those Arvales are going to be able to destroy. And now Blue losing absolutely everything. It's true that they are going to be inside on, on Purple Base. But where is Purple with the Arches? Well, when the Arches are going to be there, they should be fine. But ladies and gentlemen, Valas is on the way to Imperial. Valas is on the way to Imperial. That's wow, what a game, Pretty man. impressive. I mean... It's not over just yet. Arbalust and Thumbring coming in right now for Licks, but the Amigos are in. Their army is perhaps a little bit stronger, especially when uh, clumped up right here. The issue is, of course, coming from the fact that uh, Barls especially is super far behind. Ganji is like in an okay spot because his opponent doesn't have that much army, but still, you're looking at two players being in a stronger spot for WWP. Yeah, but that's the problem. I mean, if he's going to be in Imperial, at least that they destroy completely Mr. Yo. Destroy completely Mr. Yo. A purple suit now save Mr. Yo here. And who's going to save now, Blue? Because if he's coming with more and more Arbalest, well, the problem is that, as you say, Lix has too little still. He needs like 40, not 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man. And yet, and uh, impressive Imperial. that Mr. Yo has been able to keep up with the night numbers. Obviously, he's not on the way to Imperial Age yet, but until Imperial Age and those upgrades come in, there really isn't any advantage here for Valas. I mean, Ooh. like, the better economy doesn't really mean that much if you don't have the better army. And that's not yeah. really the case as, I mean, yeah, we're going to see him come in very soon, but that's also after a lot of knights have gone down already, and we see Varl's getting cleaned up once again. Yeah, he's getting clean on his bay, on Mr. Yo base. The point is that Mr. Yo only 76 villages. Now we have Franks with 105 villages, but 24 army. That's the problem. Yellow still have the same numbers than Valas. What the hell? Now he's coming with more and more knights. Yes, but he has the Arbalus. And the problem is, as we were talking, who's going to save now, Valas? He can save one. He can save both. And ladies and gentlemen, Fat Dragon is in a total domination mode activated. Look at his face in the webcam. And look at the amount of farming he has 67 narvales mr orlu that's that's okay ha. Uh, that that is definitely okay i mean vivi's just done such a beautiful job of minimizing the amount of archers he's lost just kept on producing them as much as possible and i think that's just exactly how you play this meta now i'm going to be coming forward with these mangonels yes barrels is going to hit imperial age but you know, you're not His looking at anything is... special when it comes to your exactly. archers. His economy is terrible right now, but this is what I don't like. Valas is trying to kill, to hit more and more Mr. Yo and he's the knights. I really think that Valas need to kill one of the player, probably, probably Red. I don't know. He's going to kill some villages. He's walling now. He's on the way to Imperial. Valas has a sick economy. That's for sure. I handed 18 villages and he's Frank. He can dominate probably, yes, if he's doing the Cavalier Arbret. But Valas, that's the problem. Check Valas' villages on goal. He has no resources. He has no resources. Say no villages on goal, Valas, right now. Because the Arbalists from oh. Fat Dragon are there. Now he's going to put villages, but he's in Imperial. And he cannot make any Arbret. So that only... Oh my god, it's open! It's open! Okay. He's trying to wall and look at the hole here inside of his base. What a game. Yellow up to Imperial. Gonna kill more villages. The mobility is just very annoying. And now Cavaliers. Oh boy. But they're oh, gonna but clean now we have the uh, forward castle coming in here for Vivi. Really gonna start to put pressure on to Barls. I honestly wonder if Barls is even well advised to go for just mass archers still. I mean, I feel like maybe even just going for skirmishers, just trying to die as slowly as possible is... Maybe your best bet, because you're not going to beat Vietnamese in an archer battle as Dravidians. You just don't have any bonuses. Mr. Yo is in problems. Mr. Yo is definitely in problems. But now he's going to be in problems as well. Uh, Ganji, not really. He has 36 army. He's going to be Arbalist in a moment. So should be fine. But he's now just catching up. This is crazy. I mean, Vivi is playing one of those games, you know? 96 Arbalest. He's killing the TC with Arbalest. He's doing a castle in front. And now he's attacking. He's attacking. Valas as well. So he's attacking two players. Mr. Yo drop it a lot, but now they can sling Mr. Yo. And if they sling a little bit Mr. Yo, 
he's gonna get back into exactly. the game. Exactly, and yeah. although the villager count isn't incredible for WWP, they still just have that numbers advantage with their army, and I just don't see how you're ever going to be able to match that. As soon as we see some better siege coming in from Vivi, and that's exactly what he's doing with a trebuchet and bombard cannon on the way, uh, I, I think it should be totally fine. Ganji going to be trying to micro-nerd it up at the bottom of this hill. Um, I don't know where to look. Same. I don't know where to look, Arlo. Now we see now 82 villains, 130, but check the numbers. Check the numbers for also Valas. He's in Imperial with 14 Cavaliers, while Mr. Yo will have 30 Cavaliers. It's incredible how Mr. Yo keep alive his knights during all the game, Arlo. During all the game. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's honestly please. just really impressive that he's been able to maintain these military numbers despite Arlo. having no eco bonus and having his eco raided uh, quite frequently. So, the army? yeah, this is just looking really strong for WWP right now. But wh yeah, but where's the army from? From 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 leagues? He need to wall, man. He has nothing now at home. I I I. He lost everything. Oh my goodness! Completely. He has lost everything. I mean, Gandhi's micro is really good. <laughs> well, it's because Green was also there. The micro also helped, but Green was there. And then we see how Valas now is going to lose absolutely everything. He's losing a TC. He's going to lose so many villains. It's an incredible amount of farming. Seriously. It's 100 Arbalists, two Rattan Arches, one Mangonel, two Threads, one Bomber Cannon. I mean, BB might be very happy with this game. He's pretty impressive, honestly. Yeah, he should be. I mean, sometimes Vivi just has these monster performances, and Yo is able to get the uh, Paladin upgrade. That wow. is really impressive, all things considered. I mean, sling or no sling, just being able to endure is absolutely critical. And now Lix is dying a rather sad and painful death, but that is honestly okay because, well, nobody's really thriving on the side of the Amigos right now. <sighs> yeah, I'm checking, I'm checking a Lix, send it all his resources, that way he has that army to Mr. Yo. So now Mr. Yo will have Paladins as well. And you might see, okay, Vala's now got more army, it's truth. But Yellow will have Paladins and Barls. Bala, sorry, he's gonna lose all his base. It's Arvales and Cavaliers killing absolutely everything. And what do you prefer now, to have Malai in a bad position or the pocket getting wrecked? Because right now there's a castle in front for Fire Dragon. Bals is 52, Vil is 33. And ladies and gentlemen, BB is 200 population as a flank with two tone centers during the whole game, basically. During the whole game, well, during the last 15 minutes. And well, we are gonna see Decided game. We were expecting a lot from these cities, guys. And hopefully, you are not being disappointed. It's epic. And I will really pay attention when when whatever team is winning, they call the GG. Because this game is one of those games that we remember, Mr. Orlo. Oh, certainly, certainly. I mean, Paladin just about to come in. The issue with Valas is that his army is primarily light cav because of the gold issue that we've been talking about. Paladin one second away from completion. There it is. So a little bit awkward in terms of that timing. And I love the flank move here from our green player. But is it going to be enough? Ah, no, Orlu, check the numbers from 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 Mr. Mr. BB. He's still 200. Doesn't matter. He's still sending more and more. He's still sending more and more. And ladies and gentlemen, military numbers for WWP 150, Amigos 75. We can say till now that except the first game this has been probably the best series so far in the tournament what people think in the chat i i want to see the reaction from the people because this is awesome Arlo, see and you thought this? i was bringing bad luck no well, the series has I mean, been uh, eh, well man it has yeah. been too many you know i mean something good uh, Arlo, yeah. please <laughs> <laughs> and now look at those well, traps and Arbalest is going forward, he's going aggressive. No army anymore. I really believe. GG Cole, my goodness. Wow. And you can see leaks. Mr. Yo and Vivi, look at Vivi. Look at Vivi smile. Ay, 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 that Vivi smile. <laughs> well, that Vivi smile, amigos. It also goal. Obviously, now Bals, Ganji, and Balas might be thinking, what happened here? What happened here, right? Because, in my opinion, they were playing great. Really, really good. But the flanks did an amazing job, Mr. Mr. Orlo. Yeah, and it really just comes down to the incredibly strong play from flanks. And beyond that, just being able to hit those absolutely critical timings with getting to Castle Age faster, helping equalize things after uh, Yo got put so far behind. And Vivi showing that he can just be an absolute force to be reckoned with. 
It's crazy. It's crazy. BB did 162 Arbalest, Arlo. 162 Arbalest during the game. A statistics, military. His KD was impressive. But we have to say that Mr. Yo controlled those knights. I mean, their teamwork was brutal. They were behind with the pocket position, but they were so, so coordinated, mostly Mr. Yo and Vivi together. I don't know what you think, but I think that was the main key here. You can see Valas yeah. with the best economy by far, but at the end, it couldn't do the job because both flanks were behind, man. We're really, really behind. Wow, what a game, man. Horrible. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Wow. Um, before guys. we get into the next one, I'm going to yeah. take a super quick break. Go, go, so go. I'll be right yeah. back, Mr. Membrillo. Guys, what do you think? It's a good chance to bring Savannah, Arabia? Well, it was a great game, guys. Hopefully you enjoy. Game number five incoming. To see. Yeah, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are starting. Hopefully this is going to start in a moment. It is starting. And oh my goodness, decided game is the hype. Decided game. Berbers, Mr. Yo Pocket. Khmer, not Sicilians, makes sense. Khmer can be sick here. And also in a close map like this, Mr. Orlu with the elephants. And then we have Leaks, Vikings, and Byzantines. I like a lot Vikings and Byzantines. Vikings economy and Byzantine with cheaper units and transition to Imperial. My goodness. But look how blue and red are so close. And Leaks is already taking one elephant to his opponent. And, and pause. A pause? What's going on? Okay, why the pauses? Why the pauses? Yeah, I don't know. Uh... Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we are. Yeah, but these pauses shouldn't happen. It really shouldn't happen. Anyway, um, Leaks taking that one. Probably Modri will take one. Ooh, he's getting so close to the TC. You have to be careful. I mean, he lame it already. And then... He's going to lame that elephant or not? Well, as I told you, I mean, if he's taking the elephant or not, there's a lot of resources. They still have one elephant. And look at the amount of... Yeah, he's going to take with the villager. I mean, you don't really need to lame, honestly. Look, he's <laughs> going with the, with the villager. Yeah. I mean, it's barely longer than the look, distance look, look. to his own elephants. But he's going to... He's going to try to now lame that one. Be careful with the hill. Oh, my God. He oh, might lose that in yet, villager. Uh, does get the hit uphill. Now in the downhill. Not anymore. Ooh, if he's hitting a but guy. Loom is in. Oh. Uh, well. Okay, yeah, the bill's, the bill's fine. He took it. He took it. He took it. And honestly, I still insist that it's good to have, but don't think he's really needed. On the right side, what's happening with purple? Taking some goats. Remember, no stone and purple. Fat dragon with Vincent is laming an elephant, but Kant is here trying to block. Ganji is here trying to block. Oof. Nah, he can't. I think laming is super hard. Oh! Ganji lame it, actually. Ganji lame it because he has one elephant on the TC and another two left still. So, Ganji is with one elephant ahead. And Ganji well, there is we go. the Mongols. That's much yep. more important for him. He has huge economy adv advantage now. Honestly. That's always the scary thing whenever there's a map like this where laming is super easy, you have lots of hunt available, and I, I predict that we will be seeing a very fast uptime into lots of archers, and that's going to be just really tricky to deal with, especially since uh, Vivi has that forward lumber camp. Yeah, but maybe they are not going to go that aggressive. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see with this amount of resources, oh. the Mongols to go in fast castle. Deal? Yeah, I mean, that certainly could be the case. Yeah. I mean, he could be fast castle with these resources easily. I don't know what you think. Like crazy time. I mean, with uh, three elephantos and plenty of uh, deer equivalents to lure, I don't see yeah. why not. Okay. So we're going to see, guys. We're going to see. Uh, a lot of things can happen. This map is just crazy. And remember, no stone in the map. And all the water, it's replaced by wood. You know, dry Socotra, no water, all wood, is what it is. Okay. It's just, uh, you know, to represent climate change and the general desertification of the world. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Three villages on wood. He's gonna now put the, the ostrich here. Um, What they are going to do? Because they cannot go towers. So. Uh, they are going to go up still quick. Uh, the Chinese team, I think. Or not. Yeah, yeah, they will. They are doing the loom. They are going to go up. Yeah. Well, their opponents are not. And I think not. with these sibs, they want to go something a little bit aggressive. Okay, red is up. Um, but I don't know, man. Like, if you go aggressive having this... Well, Ganji is going up 19 population. But that doesn't really mean that he can go... Uh, 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 that he's going to go feudal aggressive. I mean, with the resources he has, he still can try to maybe <laughs> go for... For the fast castle, you know, he has three on goal, the wood. Let's see. I mean, I think it's better Could to go just be army. getting feudal age to get the extra HP on your palisade walls and maybe get your eco upgrades and then go to castle age. Maybe too. But, um, of course, uh, Chimera can get a very fast castle age time. You can easily go, you know, 24 plus zero or something like that. Um, and then blue is also not going up to feudal age yet because it's Modri and it's aztecs and this is going to be for some hong kong monk play uh, well one team is going full feudal all the team is going fast castle at least green as you mentioned is gonna go up for that he's doing even more villages but the thing here now is do you have to keep them wall because if you don't keep them wall you won't have any army and his will is no ball completely the problem is yeah. that there's no towers you and you you take it take time to also make some army oh boy what and, and that's the thing and it's why tower rushing is such an important part of age of empires whether you enjoy those games or not is it you know helps to deal with these sort of full wall strategies because it just gives you something that can really pressure villagers that are trying to build behind it well, he could, they could have gone also men at arms. Like, they are going the, the, the slowest approach. Because if you go men at arms, those palisades just get destroyed. Like, like really destroyed. And remember one thing. They cannot defend with towers. That's also another thing. Because, yeah, you cannot attack with towers. But if you go men at arms and archers, how they wall? There's no towers. So you have to commit an army or not. I think you just build more buildings behind it. Well, but then uh, there will be a point you don't have resources. Anyway, Valas is going to be up to castles, that's for sure. You can see he's up 27 population. And no, no castle. It's army for Mongols, for Modri, as you can see. Okay, army as well. So the pocket is going to go castleage, while yellow with Berbers is going few scouts. But he's going to make a lot of scouts, Mr. Yo, probably not. I think he will just... No, no, he's in feudalage, but he's just going... He's going economy. Mr. Joe is going to go fast castle yeah, as well. I don't even see a barracks from him. No, no. <laughs> he, he, did, yeah, he did feudal, feudal approach. Did double with task or scholar, so he will have a good economy. And then he will be castle. It's obviously a little bit slower than, than the Khmer, but well, with a better echo in the long run. Let's yeah, certainly. See. And now we have the archers starting to knock at the door of Modri, but he's got a blacksmith coming in. Uh, probably will be able to afford a market pretty soon. Yeah, he will. Yeah, but and then on the other side, stone Orlo. walls. Orlo, there's a problem. Like, stone wall, with how much? He has 20 stone, Four. now zero stone. Zero stone, no more outposts. And this is the thing. With the market now, usually this approach is to sell the stone. You don't have the stone to sell. Yep. So, it's still gonna be a fast castle, but not as smooth as you probably will do it. Well, they are playing with the clone strategy, you know, clone approach with this walling, avoiding feudal aggression, and uh, trying to break in, but they can't. He has the archers here, leaks, and Leaks has Vikings economy. So, he won't take too long to go fast castle. And Mr. Yo is doing now the stable. And look at Mr. Yo resources. He's about to go up to Castle Age. They just need to hold the first attack from, from Valas, and this will be fine. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that Valas is going to have one really strong push, but we already have walls and even contingency walls coming in here for WWP. Uh, Lix has to be careful because he's still open, but as soon as they see their opponent hit Castle Age, he's probably going to just uh, back he's the heck up with those look. archers. He's walling already. It's in the go in the on the goal in front. He's starting to wall a little bit, and Mr. Yo very smart going up now. 
The problem is, and I insist, is he going to go elephants or knights? Because elephants wrecked. Elephants really, really wrecked, in my opinion. I don't yeah. know what you think. They do a lot of damage, and they are especially good at taking down buildings, which is pretty useful on this map. Yeah, well, he's trying uh, to get in. But the question is, do you have the eco to support it? And it's going to be starting with good knights point. because Valas is boring. Yeah, he's doing the knights. He's doing the knights. He's doing another stable. And now they have army. They have spears. They have a lot of army. 16, 12. Well, Amigos also coming with the archers here. And now what is Modric going to do? Modric is going to be in Castellage. But look at the walls he's doing. All houses here. This is crazy. Mr. Yo is going to be there in Castellage as well. He's doing the market. I believe Mr. Yo is going to do at least two stables. Probably he should do even three, if you ask me. But I we wouldn't see. hate it. Right? I mean, what's he is building he? the market, which does lead me to believe maybe he wants to add in some town centers. He's also only on one stable, so that's further indication that he wants to maybe add in some economy, but... Eh, maybe it's for the cartography, you know? Just to see exactly what's going on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, because he's very important, you know? Now he's doing the bloodlines, he has to be careful. And the knights, uh, he has five knights, that's the problem. The timing is definitely there for Valas. But if you don't attack now, well, they are probably waiting Modri. Siege workshop and a monastery. All right, but Red is about to go up to Castle. What do you prefer here? The monk approach, the siege, or Vikings beginning Castle? Because it's hard to say. The knights are coming with Chromos as well. If they break now, if they break now, and this is really bad for Leaks. Leaks didn't wall anything. His walls are very weak. Only Palace. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yo has walled everything, but they have only Palace. But the problem is that they are going to the right side. Fat Dragon need to move the village there. I think he's gonna lose all the army now. He's going back right now, and those knights are going to wreck absolutely oh, everything. Where are those archers going from purple? I don't really know. And now we have Cyan clicking up to Castle Age ahead of uh, purple. And this is pretty darn rough. I mean, the Amigos are just so far ahead with that Chimera Fast Castle time that yeah. I don't really see what WWP are going to be able to do to stop this. I mean, it's seven knights to two right now. Yes. There is the third stable coming in, but that's going to need to be a lot of knights in a not a lot of time. This is really, really, really bad, bad and weak approach here by Leaks. Didn't wall anything, just those spies that now they are going in, and he's still not in castle. It missed the old three stables, and now a monastery, and Blue is coming. Blue is coming with the monks, he's coming with the siege, and ladies and gentlemen, Amigos is getting closer and closer to make the upset. Are you gonna make it or not? Well, we will see. You have to be careful. Those knights don't have any upgrade. Not any upgrade. And that's not good because those knights will die. Now Mr. Yo is coming with three stables. And now the monastery. So Mr. Yo can spam knights with Berbers forever. Forever and ever. And with better upgrades. So... Oh, he's gonna clean the arches. So good play. So good play. He's gonna clean all the arches before he reaches Castleage. He's gonna clean all those. Yes, he's losing the archery range, but three monks, two mangonels. We will see. The micro so important. The knights are coming here, but I insist no upgrades in those knights. It's difficult, Mr. Arnold. Oh, Crossbow coming in at, in at the very low HP archery range. Is that the only one left? Red doesn't have an archery range. Yeah, he doesn't have, uh, it seems. But it doesn't matter. He has university. It's nice. He will have ballistic for the villains, not for the... What the <laughs> hell, man? Make arches, man. Aye, aye, aye. Well, oh, let's no. see. University, but no archery range. Ballistic for the villains is the way to go, guys. New meta game. He can't make the crossbows. <laughs> he bought it the stone. He bought it the stone. Oh, my goodness. He bought it a lot of stone to make it tower. Oh, man. He's now walling a little bit, but... Mr. Yo again. Oh, Mr. Yo again. Oh, but he failed with the walls. Ay, 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 oh, Leaks. No. You wanted your now teammate. You wanted your teammate. The TC is going to be down. Uh, oh, my God, Leaks. Yeah, with this the is Titanic. looking really grim here Oof. for WWP. Oof. Lix is just not really in a position to do a whole lot. He's getting the guard tower upgrade, which, I mean, if this map had stone, I think would be an excellent idea. But, you know, it doesn't. Yes, Mr. Yo. To buy some more, and on the other side, it's not like there's really anything too crazy happening oh, right tower. now. Just he did super, war tower. Uh, defending. This is why he did the university for, to to buy the war tower, man. I I I, but not TC. Well, he got the war towers trying to defend. Now he need to be careful. And purple, is purple. Oh my God, this is gonna change the game completely. You didn't notice. Now Mr. Yo is coming from behind. He's gonna try to kill. No, he's not. Uh, VV in a map like this. Clicking Imperial, he can clean all. Remember my words. 
and look his resources. Uh, he's about ready to go up. I mean, it is Byzantines. He can afford it. Exactly. To go up to Imperial, doing another tower. And I insist, full knight with Imperial approach with Byzantine. He's on the way to Imperial. We're going to have leaks almost defeated. Well, he's doing towers. He's gaining time. How do you stop the Avalis? At this point, uh, it's going to be really difficult. Both the Manganellas and the Monks are going to struggle, and they're sort of the uh, the core of your uh, support units to your army. I mean, oh there God. are 31 crossbowmen right now for Cyan, but if like Arbalest and Bracer comes in, then they're not really going to be anywhere near as good. And Lix is really good at dying slowly, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. It's pretty crazy game, guys. These are decided. Remember, some people was telling, "Well, Socotra map is." I was checking the chat. He's bring crazy fights, man. He's bring one some of the most epic games. He has bought it stone like crazy, you know, to make towers. He's gonna make now red at TC. Leaks, well, he has no wood, you know, so he can't. I mean, what they are just trying is to get time for purple, but purple has an old arches, not yet. He has only 15. Obviously, he will need a lot more. A lot more. He's gonna wall. They need to wall a little bit in this area. And the Arvalis, if he has a decent amount of them. It's gonna be absolutely epic, but he still have no ballistic for those ar for those arches. There's no ballistic also for 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 Ganji and Ganji, Modri and uh, Valas are coming. Redemption. Well, redemption won't work as well against this. And now, what is Lix doing? He's buying more. Okay, yeah. he's buying more resources to do what? Ballistic now is walling here. Mr. Yo need to wall stone walls. Another stone wall. It's just exactly the stone you have to wall. No more. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's oh the snap for you. Oh my goodness. Crazy amount of army deleting those. Redemption, chain barding armor. It's gonna work. The Imperial Age 40 arches by Ganji. 40 arches. And Mr. Valas is still doing more and more knights. These knights from Yoar plus two as well. Okay, and he has four stables. Well, let's see. Let's see the power of those. Imperial Age plus three. Well, plus three on Arbalest. But no Arbalest. There simply isn't enough economy here for Vivi. And you just have such a huge hill to climb, both metaphorically and literally. No now market. we're going to start uh, converting houses to uh, delete them. And... Yeah, oh, no market man. also. Okay, he's going in. They are trying to go in. They know that if they, if the Arbalists are just gonna dominate, let's see if Vivi's gonna be able to micro. This is so important game. And look at Red doing towers to defend Mr. Yo. Mr. Yo has a lot of knights. Those arches are just gonna be amazing with the Arbalists Arbor that is coming now. Unbelievable game. One of those epic games, Mr. Orlu, with the Battle of Africa 3 edition, $30,000 prize pool. And with the knights and the Arbalists there are gonna be able to play versus three. Well, they get more numbers, but Purple has now the quality military with those arvales and imagine if he's doing chemistry because right now amigos can't go up to imperial this is insane i mean modri is the closest to imperial age on his team but even then he's still not super close so this is going to be a very significant timing advantage for vv with these arbs i just fear that he simply doesn't have the numbers yes and you know they're going to micro they're going to dance back and forth and maybe vv is eventually going to win but with less than half of the army of his opponent, I mean, it's gonna take so long Ooh. to clean up, and Ooh, the rest of the team yeah. is kinda dead. Okay, well, the tower is there with the, with the war, war tower. We need to see if those Arval is going to be an old, as you mentioned, 22. He has eight in the queue, but he's still unable to mask. He's losing quite a lot of them. He's still there with a lot of knights. Like, 30 knights, Mr. Yo, and uh, I don't know if they should go and raid, maybe, with the knights. Should do something with those knights because he's holding with the arbalists or or not. I mean, it's so difficult to say. But now those arbalists are doing a good damage, really good damage. Twenty six is still blue, almost on the way to imperial. Teal on the way to imperial as well soon. My goodness, yeah. this is it's working, man. It's working for amigos. Unbelievable. I mean, they're looking to be completely in the driver's seat right now. They are ahead in economy pretty much across the board. And they just have that army, all three players, able to contribute quite a lot. I mean, he the pockets ahead, monks. Valos to Mr. Yo. Uh -oh, Ganji is able to keep par with his opponent. And yeah, this okay. is just such a strong position on the hill. Let's see. They are going now. They're going to send all the knights or not. The Avalis are there. They need to kill the Mangonos. If they kill the Mangonos, it's going to be domination or not. We don't know. It's still green and teal on the way to Imperial. Modri is about to go up to Imperial. If they are not able to push anytime soon, the game is absolutely over and amigos with the 
perfect strategy plan, it seems. I don't know. Now they have the chemistry. It's still no chemistry. More Magonos down. Oof. Ooh, good shot there. No. And getting the Flips heal, a couple man. of arms. They have the chemistry, but Mr. Yo need to commit. They have to clean somehow. I don't think it's possible, but they have to do something else that they are doing. Otherwise, it will be impossible. But they have monks. They have three players. Really good play Yeah, by I Amigos. mean, it's just too really much good. stuff. Uh, like I said, maybe Vivi pushes this back eventually, but probably not even by the time that his opponents get to Imperial Age. I mean, they only outrange the Crossbowmen by one, and with the, you know, even or superior numbers from Cyan to Purple, it's not like uh, Vivi's really making a ton of headway. Okay, we have the chemistry almost there. He has uh, 35 barbels, but they still... Gandhi has 51, 51 archers, so it's a lot. It's really, really a lot. Mr. Yurstein, hold it. They made a pause. I'm sweating, guys. I'm happy that you don't see, but I'm sweating <laughs> right now. Sweating like crazy. Well. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think this is still pretty overlooking. I mean, they have... 50 more villagers do the Amigos. They're going to be all in Imperial Age relatively soon, and they even have this strong position on the hill. Okay, the game keep going. The stress is real for everyone. Military numbers, Amigos 101. Villa is obviously ahead. He's doing towers. He's doing towers. He has 17 population leaks. We have to say that leaks played amazing in some games, but in two games, and it's the truth, he got destroyed. Yeah. Literally destroyed in the first and in the last game totally destroyed and when and you're right looking now, at players oof. who are just on such a high overall skill level i mean you just can't afford to have somebody die and like yo can yeah. do a lot to make the carry plays happen but there is a very real limit to how much he can do and it's like it's not like oh he's so much better than valas that you know yo can easily beat him 1v2 i mean it's not the case at all Heresy's on the way, but it's not going to be in for a little while yet. And now, with Imperial Age coming, this looks like it's going to be the final fight of the series. There are tons of conversions on the way here for Modri. Wow. And now the crossbowmen are shooting Ooh. away at the Arbalest, and this is going to be over six ways to Sunday. Look at the amount of knives now for Modri. He got quite a lot before Heresy was kicking their unbelievable game, seriously. And now WWP is going to have to play the decider and the Amigos going to qualify it with one of the apps for serving the tournament, right? Yes, but so win a really amazing level. An amazing level that they are proving here that they are really prepared. Really, really prepared, prepared with the strategies. Their players are individually performing. Yes. Their coordination is good. I mean, really, we just can't have any complaints in their overall play. Like, yes, they lost two games. This was a close series, but that's just because WWP is also really good. And yeah. I, like Amigos, they're playing like a top team. JJ Cole, whoa, 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 whoa. That was amazing series by Amigos and WWP. Was fantastic. Was really, really fantastic. Awesome play by Amigos. Awesome play by Amigos that already qualified to the quarterfinals and they are just there. Wow. Wow. Really, really well played. Really amazing gameplay here. Let's show a little bit the, the happiness. You can see Dallas put his egg. He's smiling. Everyone is smiling. This is great. This is great to see. I'm sorry. I feel very sad for, obviously, for for WWP, but they are not out of the tournament. They can still get there. And that was an amazing game, Mr. Orlu. Amazing series. And look at this. Ganji in this one with the Mongols. 113. Fat Dragon did the strategy, but Leaks got really, really destroyed in this one. And that was, oh well, Valas, 69 villages, you know. And, uh, well, Pretty crazy. The economy he got, Valas, look, 26,000, Molly 25, and Mr. Yo much more behind. Perfect strategy they did. Valas 14 minutes in Castle Age. Beautiful. Gandhi 19 minutes, 16. Was very, very good. And hopefully, guys, you have enjoyed. Wow. Oh, yeah. Just, uh. Well, yeah, yeah. amigos. Oh. Hello? I'm here, guys. Sorry that I, I get like this, but we continue with the with the stream. You know, has been a very long series. First of yeah. first of every of everything of all, uh, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. I mean, yeah. uh, amazing series, guys.
you can be proud. Yeah, we definitely are. We okay. a very strong team. Yeah, they are really strong. People, you know, that they were considering them favorite, but you are proving in this series, well, at least it's the feeling which you can you can answer to this, that you will really were prepared for some of the games for sure, and you have some clear strategies going. Yes, yeah, that's definitely that's correct. True. Yep. Go, 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 Modri. We're, we're not going to go into details, but we are No, prepared. no, no, yeah. yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's clearly obvious. I mean, I'm not going to talk in, a lot into the details. I mean, when we saw the Boulder Forest, when we saw the Socotra, I was like, okay, we see Pocket Valas with Khmer. That's going to be a fast caster, Red right, Valas? Like, and it's too powerful with that civilization. Yep. And Modri Aztecs, probably everybody thought I'm going to go crossbows, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, Modri, when I saw that you were walling there, and then did you did you think... In the last game, just when you limit Ganji, when you limit with Mongols to, yeah. okay, I'm tempted to go fast castle, you thought, no, let's go full army. Or you, you, you know, because with those resources, well, you could go really quick up to. Well, I've been asked by my team not to disclose too many strategies. So let's say I considered <laughs> a lot of options. Okay. Anyway, yeah, we're not going to talk about the strategies. Let's talk about the feelings that you get when, when you are already uh, qualified for, for the quarterfinals, you know? Also, this, well, you never know the brackets, you know? But in theory, yeah. that also benefit to qualify to the upset for supposed to be, and I put in quotes, for a better matchup. Do you think that, well, that's something that should make you really happy in theory, right? Yeah, that uh, was... Yeah, go moderate. Quite important to us because now we don't have to face like the you know top two, top three, whatever teams, and uh, we should be considered the favorites in the first round of the playoffs. So that's uh, it's a big difference if we won today as opposed to let's say losing today and winning the next round. Then you just get a worse seeding, and yeah, you can be in okay. the first yeah. round because you're cutting very important. Yeah, we really wanted to win today. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, yeah. when you, when you, well, Balz, you are here, right? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Balz. Sorry, we don't have a spot for all the cameras, you know, but <laughs> it's Balz, when you see leaks coming, because it's what against you, right? <laughs> With villains in the first game, and then he sent one villain, then three, and then he sent everything. Uh, I mean, he doesn't know that in these kind of games, <laughs> you are kind of an amazing player. Yeah, I mean, like we go, all we could do is like laugh a little uh, about this because <laughs> this is like what we do every day. So, uh, even though I didn't exactly, uh, Vegas, play, I didn't play it perfectly, but yeah, like he was playing uh, like into what I'm good at, so that's like perfect for me. Yeah. Well, they, they were, uh, Balas, I'm sorry, they wanted to kick you from the, from the camera there because Dark was there also with you in the same link, you know, wasn't on purpose, you know, <laughs> they are preparing the next series. It was a long one. And, and, and then in the Savannah game, were you feeling that you were ahead at some point because you were hitting so hard the pocket? What happened in that game? I think, I think that was a mistake. I was too greedy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, did, I did bad decisions in that game, which I think cost us the game. Like, by, like my mistakes cost us. But um, I also lost a little bit too much there. First, the I fast should, melee uptime was tricky. I should okay. kill Vivi and then go to the next guy. <laughs> yeah, but when, yeah, when that... you feel the, but when you feel the blood, right, Vals? You feel the blood there that you could go and take more blood. You Sometimes you get these decisions. Can't happen. Can't happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very greedy, you know? Like, if, <laughs> if I can eat a cake and have a cake, I will, I will definitely do that. <laughs> anyway, um, about, about being in a S-tier tournament, you know, 30,000 uh, prize pool, were you feeling at some point like nervous? How, how were you feeling playing those games? Because you were like, okay, we have too much points. To one, then the, the, the Arabia or Savannah game was going well. And how was those feelings? People want to know, you can talk about that, Modric. That, that's not a strategy. We can talk about the feelings. Uh, I, I think we're very stressed. Like, uh, like we are very prepared, I feel. So um, it's not <laughs> not a, not very emotional for us to like play on stream, I guess. But okay, 
Uh, no, it's not, it's not about the stream. I, I'm not even talking about the stream yourself, you know, because you love the game, mm. uh, right? Like we, most of us, we, we love this game and being there on the quarterfinals with now probably a better brackets, you know, more time also to, to think because now you don't have to play two series the next week. You can only focus in one series, best mm. of seven, quarterfinals. It changed a lot of things to win today. So it was really important to win today. Yeah, I can't speak for everyone, but I was a bit stressed on the last game having to perform, but it, it went good. Also, it's quite laggy, right? And it's, uh, they're quite awkward players sometimes. They can force a lot of mistakes. Okay. But uh, it worked out, so that was good. Well, of course, some nerves. Okay, well, hopefully hopefully you have a joy and you are enjoying with the tournament. We have enjoyed a lot. Do you think, guys, that you are maybe being underestimated for some of the teams? Or in general, not, I mean, in general, that your team is being underestimated because you are the seed number six, so you qualified right away. We, you didn't need the, the qualification. I think the players who are playing in this tournament are not underestimating us, but like the casual viewer might be right because we're not uh, celebrities of AOE. We're not like huge names, so they haven't heard much about us. But I think our opponents will like take us seriously. They know what we're capable of, so I yeah. don't think that's an issue. What? Now you're starting yeah. to get celebrities. Come on, Modri, don't be humble. You're well, you're a celebrity, celebrity. man, right? But <laughs> can't you I mean, also, it's, it's not like we uh, it's not like we crushed for WWP, right? It was pretty close. So yeah, exactly. Like, I we win, and we won it today. And yeah, but it's not like also like uh, yeah. it's some huge upset. At least yeah, yeah. in my eyes, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you won not really. You won not really yeah. them before in the previous tournament. In the return no, of no, the we lost to them. No, no, we actually got uh, destroyed. Uh, uh, ru rulers of Rome won with them. Oh, oh rulers of Rome. Yeah, yeah. Not, oh, Gandhi, not exactly was, Gandhi was quiet there, like. There we go. There we go, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, now we know why you joined. Up. Gandhi, now you know. Now we know why you joined the Amigos. You know, you were the the, the the wild card there. Okay. Well, thank you so much, guys. Hopefully, you enjoy and good luck for the quarterfinals. But I think yes. you guys don't need good luck. You're gonna be well prepared. So. <laughs> well, let's see. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Take care. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.